He remembers it. While he was looking for a job, he crossed the street and then, he clutched the phone in his hand and thought, yes, his phone. In the morning, before leaving home, the guy told his younger sister, whose name is Kusunoki, that he went for an interview. Kusunoki ran out of her room and told her brother that they would have hamburgers today. Even if he cannot get a job again, he will have to return home immediately. The guy put on his shoes and asked his sister why she was saying this right before he left. Kusunoki said their parents would pray for him. The guy himself thought that three years ago their parents died in an accident. Since then they have had to live on their own. And life was, of course, very hard for them. His younger sister always supported and took care of him. He turns a blind eye to the fact that she invested in stocks on his behalf when he turned 20. Because he hopes that she will have great career success in the future. Because he was looking for a job, his sister started to worry. And that's why she became involved in the stock market. He tried to push these thoughts away from himself and told himself that no, this would not happen. He needs to stop thinking. He couldn't stand it and shouted that in the end, he needed to find a stable job. Kusunoki ran up to him and told him that he would soon break his record. He has already been refused a job 100 times. And by the way, don't let him forget to buy her sukiyaki ice cream. If he is not there, then let him buy a fresh tofu pudding with seaweed. They are very popular, so they can sell out quickly. Her brother thought she was joking when she said those weird things, didn't he? Actually, no one buys them, and that's why no one supplies this product. After that, he left the apartment and walked to the pedestrian crossing. He looked at his watch and said that there were five minutes left before the interview. At that moment, the light turned green and he had to cross the road. But as soon as he entered the roadway, a truck drove out, which almost hit him. It all happened very quickly, but the guy was very lucky. The car was soft-boiled. The guy breathed a sigh of relief and said that it was still quite a bit. If he had been hit by a truck, he would have been such a waste. He looked at the car and said that he had forgotten about the driver. He was just about to approach the truck before checking on the driver's condition. But the truck opened and horses ran out. The guy was standing right in their way at the time. He froze in surprise and shock and said that the horses had run out of the truck. After a while, he woke up. He said that it was true that he was going to an interview, and then he was trampled on. He got up and looked around, but did not recognize this place. Or rather, there was nothing here, it was just an empty space. He asked, where is he? Is this really paradise? Then a voice told him that he had just died. The horse thief crashed while running away. And then, unfortunately, he was trampled by these horses. The guy asked if he really died because of this. He apologized to Miles. Then someone called out to him. But the guy basically didn't want to pay attention to it. He turned away and said that his family always seemed to die the same way because of a traffic accident. Then the creature that was calling him couldn't stand it and asked if he really dared to ignore him when he was talking to him. The guy turned around and saw a demon in front of him. He was very scared. The girl hit him on the head and asked what kind of demon she was to him. She's a goddess. The guy asked if she had read his mind. So she really is a goddess, isn't she? The girl said that, of course, and that's why she met with him. Every 10 million people who have died have the opportunity to enter another world. He will either be reborn or just die, so let him choose. The guy asked what about bringing him back to the old world. The girl said it was impossible, so he wants to die. The guy stopped her and said that if he didn't want to die, he would go to another world, right? And this means that he will be reborn. The girl told him that no, because he would certainly die if he was reborn with this body. She will give him a special skill. This world is full of monsters and magic. In short, this is an RPG game. Loss of loot and experience from killed monsters. Level up, that's what another world is like. And that's why she will give him the skill of his choice. He can become a knight. The guy didn't hesitate to say that he didn't want to be a knight. The deception skill or the evil domination skill are also interactive. Is there any skill that will help him survive? The girl said that here are some of her recommendations. Teleportation, theft, and so on. After all, the main task is to defeat the monsters. The guy asked her if there was a skill that increased experience 100 times in a safe way. The girl said that 100 times is too much, a maximum of 20 times. The guy thought about it and thought that 20 times. This means that if he fights for 5 years, he will accumulate as much experience as a normal person will fight for 100 years. That's pretty good. He thinks it will be a good skill in another world. So he told the girl that he decided to choose a skill that increases his experience by 20 times. The goddess said it was understandable. He chose his ability. She just clapped her hands. The guy was surprised and asked what the hell. He thought it would be different somehow. The goddess took him by the head and asked him what he wanted her to kiss him, or what. He's so naive. The guy tried to get out of her clutches and said he didn't need to. 
The goddess let him go and said that there was something else he should keep in mind. There is no specific mission in the other world, and there are not so many differences compared to the old one, so he should enjoy his new life. After which, this goddess immediately disappeared and left him one here. The guy thought he shouldn't have asked her to leave him here. He has gained a skill that increases his experience by 20 times. It was his decision, so now he has to live with it. He decided to wait, because he thought that something was going to happen now, and he would be transported to another world. But after a while, he was still here. Nevertheless, he could not stand it and turned to the goddess, who said that he had not entered another world. But there was no response. Then the guy screamed with all his might. A window opened in front of him. The girl who looked out said it was so noisy. When had she overslept? In front of him he saw a sweet girl who told him that she was a goddess. The guy was surprised and asked where the other goddess was. This girl said she thought he shouldn't know. She's going to tell him everything now. He just died. Every 10 million people who have died have the opportunity to enter another world. The guy interrupted her and said that he had already heard it. The goddess said that she would grant him a skill. The guy said that he already has a skill that increases his experience by 20 times. The goddess said it was understandable. She doesn't have that skill, but she has a similar one. After that, she gave him some kind of skill and was about to leave. The guy tried to stop her. The goddess said she was going back to sleep, so let him enjoy the other world. The guy wanted to say something to her, but then he had a sharp headache. And then he woke up in some room. In this strange room, he saw a sign on which it was written that he should read a book. He picked up a book that was lying on the bedside table and asked what was in this book. He started flipping through this book and said he was Japanese. Of course, he is Japanese. His name is Dejiro, and he lives in another world. This world is called Aza, and he got into this world, and now it will become a legacy. There are other rebirths in this world. He also read there that he can check his status if he says to open the status. Dejiro recited these words, after which a panel appeared in front of him. He was very surprised by this. His characterization was written on this panel. He didn't have a job. He was level 1. The race is human. HP was 10 out of 10. MP was 8 out of 8. Attack was 9. Defense he had 7. Magic attack was a 4. Magic defense was 3. Speed was 4. Luck he had 10. He also had equipment, which included a vesti, leather shoes -y. He didn't have any skills, nor did he have any achievements. The other form is a level 1 citizen. Dejiro looked at all this and said, everything is the same as in the RPG. It's easy to understand. Then he came to the information where the job was listed. This made him very sad, and he said that there was work in this world too. If he completes the task, his level of work will increase. Civilians have to pay taxes. Mages can use magic, and hunters can hunt monsters. He drew attention to the skills and said that the experience was multiplied by 20 times. Only one twentieth experience is needed to reach the next level. This is what he got from two goddesses. 1 to 20 yes, she is almost similar with one skill. This means that his experience will be multiplied by about 40 times. He thought about something again, and then said that it was multiplayer. After that, he read that if his experience is multiplied by 20 times, and it takes 1 out of 20 experience to level up, then it increases by 400 times. Dejiro was very happy about it and said that it was so great. He can accumulate experience 400 times faster than ordinary people. However, he doesn't have a job in this world. It would be much better if she were, because he was not given any additional status or skill. He has to find a job and then raise his level. There are rabbits in this area, and he can use them for food or sell them to merchants. You can also use a bag to store food. He pressed this button, after which a small bag appeared in his hand. Dejiro asked that how much food would it hold. He opened this bag and was very surprised. He said that this bag is endless. In games, it is given for completing achievements. With him, he can collect everything in this world. Moreover, he received several coins. It was also written in this book that he could change his job in the northern city. And finally, there is a notification of a job change. It also said that if he committed a serious crime, then he automatically becomes a criminal. In that case, he will be persecuted. And a little advice, he must never allow this to happen. Dejiro said he doesn't think he would want to be a criminal. It looks like you can take this card with you. And first he needs to go to the northern city. There was a door in front of him, which he went to and opened it. After the balcony opened this door, Dejiro found himself outside, and the door immediately disappeared. He asked what was wrong, so this is magic, right? Then something squeaked under his feet. The guy immediately jumped back and asked if he had stepped on something. On the ground, he found a slime that was now unconscious. Dejiro leaned over and asked what it was. A system window popped up in front of him, in which it was written that he had won. The monster is defeated. 
Deijiro asked if there really are slugs in this world. It's so much like an RPG. His mood immediately improved and he said he needed to try his best. At that moment, he heard a strange sound and was informed that his level had been raised. Deijiro immediately opened the status window and said that he had only defeated one slime. But, but the system told him that he had already reached level 3. His status has been confirmed. His experience is needed 20 times. Only 1 out of 20 experience is required. He was just incredibly happy and said it was amazing. At this rate, at that moment, two small rabbits appeared in front of his eyes, which he immediately killed. The system informed him that the level had been raised. Deijiro said it was good that he killed them, but it certainly takes a little courage. Then the system informed him that he did not have a job, as well as skills. A job change has begun. The parameters of the subtasks. The civilian's job has been unblocked. The farmer is unlocked. The hunter and the woodcutter have also been unlocked. Deijiro said that unblocking works. This is a certain style of RPG. Well, if he doesn't have a job, then he won't be able to acquire skills either. He called up the status window again. And he said that stats are growing rapidly. He just killed two rabbits. His experience increases several times faster than that of a normal person. That is, he will need to kill 800 rabbits in order to achieve this result. He thought that when people enter this world, they automatically become civilians, and that's why none of them are unemployed until level 20. Perhaps they don't know yet that without a job, you can get skills. Deijiro continued to study this system further and asked why there are so many places to work here. He clicked on something, and then he received a message saying that if you delete no work from the original slot, it will be impossible to return it. Deijiro said that he probably wouldn't create a subtask. But then something came to him, and he said that if he deleted the status, there was no job, then they would no longer be able to return it. He thinks there are some advantages to being unemployed. Surely no one would want to have such a status. Well, he'll just go with him and see what happens. After which, he sighed and said that he was still unemployed in this world. After a while, he finally reached the nearest town. There was an inscription at the entrance to the city that he couldn't read. But then a girl came out to him, who greeted him and said that welcome to Florence, the Labyrinth City. Deijiro asked her if he could enter the city. The girl said that, of course, but first he would have to put his hand on this crystal. Deijiro pointed at the crystal and asked what's on this one, right? The girl said yes, he will check his job status. The guy hesitated and thought that the status of unemployed already seemed so shameful. He blushed and said that the job was quite specific. The girl smiled and said that how to explain it to him. It does not show a specific job. They just want to make sure he's not a criminal. If he is a criminal, then the crystal will turn black. If he is a merchant, he will turn green. And if he is an aristocrat, then gold. Based on the color, the tax is also calculated. Deijiro said it was understandable. It is very comfortable. After that, he put his hand on this crystal. The girl told him that it looks like he has no problem entering this city, so the amount of his entrance taxes. He took out his pouch and gave her one gold coin. The girl said that yes, that's enough. At that moment, he heard a loud ringing again, and the system told him that the citizenship level had been raised. Deijiro went into the city and thought that different jobs affect the choice of quests. He'll check it out later. This is the shopping market where she sent him, but first he has to do something with his clothes. They all look at him as a beginner, so he decided to go to the clothing store first. He went into the store, where he was greeted by a girl who told him that he was so handsome. She asked him what he wanted to buy. Deijiro said he needed casual clothes, and he wanted to sell these. The girl said that it was understandable, but first he would have to find new clothes. Deijiro was already putting on new clothes and thought that, fortunately, she agreed to buy it. Meanwhile, the girl said that this vest, he's priceless. Deijiro immediately jumped out of the fitting room and said that three gold coins. It's worth that much, right? He usually gets excited when he hears the word gold. The girl said that the new clothes really suit him. And does he know how much the income in her shop is equal to per year? When she was an adventurer, was it too much for her? He's not used to being an adventurer yet, that's why he's so honest. Deijiro asked her, why is the price of this vest so high? The girl told him that because it was very valuable material. Things from other worlds are very rare, and that's why researchers are willing to buy them at a high price. Deijiro was a little surprised and thought that this was how they knew about other worlds. He told the girl that it was okay. The girl asked if he was selling it. The guy, without hesitation, said that, of course. The girl told him that she didn't have that much money right now, so he could come back tomorrow. After that, Deijiro left the store. He was beaming with joy and said that he did not know that the jacket he usually wears to an interview would cost so much. Fortunately, he doesn't have many expenses. Great, and now it's time for him to buy some food. He went into the nearest tavern. 
The strange men immediately looked at him. The guy was scared and thought that the atmosphere here was so creepy. He approached the girl I was standing behind the reception desk and told her that he wanted to sell rabbits. The girl greeted him and said that first he had to show his adventurer ID card. Dejiro didn't understand what she was talking about and asked what the adventurer's ID card was right. This made his situation a little more complicated, and he said that if he did not change his unemployed status, then he would not be able to buy anything in this store, and he thought he could live without having to change it. Then he was approached by a man who asked if there were any problems. The girl said it was Mr. Matthias. She told him that selling in grocery stores had nothing to do with his business. Matthias turned to the guy and said that he had heard that he wanted to register. He has an idea for him, and he thinks it's better for them to go outside. Dejiro followed the man. The man told him that there are many different shops here. If he wants to enter them, then he needs to have a job. But nevertheless, there is a way out of this situation. Or rather, start your own business. Dejiro said it's understandable, but doesn't that violate? Matthias understood what his boyfriend wanted to ask and said no. This is allowed, but the union of shops will charge him a fee. Dejiro asked him if he could do it for him. Matthias said no, he couldn't. He is not an adventurer. He's a slave trader. Dejiro immediately tensed up. The man smiled and said that even though he says he is a slave trader, they are not bad. They feed the slaves and provide them with housing. In addition, if they do not treat them carefully, they will be severely punished. Dejiro looked away and said that when he heard the word slave trader, he felt uncomfortable. Matthias said that he not only sells them, but publishes them for rent. All actions that cause pain or are cruel to slaves are prohibited here. Dejiro thought that simply put, they don't treat them badly. He asked this man that, by the way, how much is a slave worth? Matthias said it all depends on the race. If the slave is a human, then from one to three gold pieces. And besides, if he has special skills, then the prices are correspondingly higher. Dejiro thought that it was obvious that they were not so easy to buy, since they were too expensive, and even the per capita tax had to be taken into account. At this time, they had already reached Matthias' store. The man stopped and said, welcome to his store. Dejiro thought that this business guarantees profit, right? The man took him to a room and told him to wait for him here. He will bring a slave who matches his condition. After a while, the man returned and apologized for waiting. The man brought him a slave. The girl said her name was Haru, and she was from the White Wolf Clan. It's nice to meet her. Dejiro thought that he wanted to sell rabbits to the guild. But why is he here? He doesn't have a job, and that's why he can't get into the guild. He will ask Haru to come inside, and in doing so he will not break the law. She will sell rabbits instead of him, or maybe. He was waiting for her outside now. He was very nervous and thought, why is it taking so long? Had she run away? She's wearing an Arab collar, so she should be obedient. Then Haru turned to him and apologized for making him wait so long. Ajiro didn't expect him to approach him so suddenly, so he was startled. He told the girl that she had been there for a little while. Haru explained to him and said that he asked to make the most of them, and that's why she asked to use the skill and cut them into pieces. Dejiro thought that was why it took so long. He was very grateful to her. Haru gave him the money for these rabbits and said that this was his money. He received one silver medal. Dejiro was surprised by this and thought that he thought the total price would be 10 cents for one rabbit, but here it is three times more. It is really profitable to cut them. He felt awkward in front of Haru, so he apologized to her. Haru looked at him questioningly and said that everything was fine, but what was he apologizing for? After that, he and Haru decided to take a walk around the market. Dejiro said that the opportunity to join the guild is already a good thing. A freelance swordsman is better than an unemployed one. Haru asked him that then why shouldn't he try? Fortunately, there is a maze in this city. If he stays in it for three years, he will become a swordsman. Dejiro said it was three years, but he thought it would be about three days for him. Haru said yes, but it's not that simple. Dejiro said that there is a reason why he does not change the status of his job. However, he still wants to get into the maze. Haru told him that if that was the case, then please let him take her to the maze. The white wolf has better hearing and sense of smell than humans. He'll need it there. Even if he gets lost, she'll find him by scent. Dejiro took a few steps back from her and asked what the smell was, right? Haru said she could even hear his stomach growling. The guy was completely embarrassed, and he told her to stop. It was more interesting than he thought. Haru asked if he was serious. Dejiro offered her a pork barbecue. Haru hesitated and said she didn't know. Dejiro said it would be the payment for the rabbits. Haru thanked him. After that, they went to a vendor who was selling barbecue and bought some for themselves. Dejiro told the girl that if he had her, then he didn't need anyone else. Haru was embarrassed and said she wasn't that good. 
However, she will not block the way. Deijiro thought that by wagging her tail, she was showing self-control, right? He told her that this trip was getting more interesting with her arrival. She was about to tell him, but he interrupted her and, apologizing, said that when taking a slave on credit, it was said that he should not suffer. Haru said it was fine. She understood. When the two of them walked out, he escorted Haru back home. Haru said that he helped her so much today. Thanks to him, Deijiro said you should thank her. Haru said that she got out of here for a while, but she was grateful to him anyway. She was having fun. After that, he said goodbye to the girl. Nathias, who had been sitting in this room all this time and had heard their entire conversation, said after Haru left that she looked good. Deijiro said that, of course, he told him himself that if anything happened to her, he would pay the hospital fee and compensation. She looks like she really wants to get into the maze. He doesn't think this will be the best place for her. Matthias said she couldn't go there. In this kingdom, slaves do not fall under any strict rules. They may even have any conditions for the buyer to some extent. But this only applies to their one year. Deijiro asked that one year, right. Matthias said that this is a law on the protection of slaves. If a slave does not want to be served, then the conditions will be more difficult to fulfill. And eventually the buyers will give up. The guy asked him if there was any condition for Haru. Matthias said she wants her customers to be stronger than her. White wolves will only be loyal to those who are stronger than themselves, because being loyal to a weaker one means putting your life in danger. Deijiro said that he really doesn't understand and doesn't think that explains why she can't go to the maze. Matthias said that there is actually a person of royal blood who wants her and this person is one of the supporters of all the shops for researchers, so it's hard to say anything. Deijiro thought that if someone paid attention to Haru, then he might have problems. Money has the same power here. Matthias said that this man couldn't beat Haru and is now waiting for another one year. Deijiro said that it turns out that after a year the conditions will cease to apply, and he will be able to buy Haru with enough money. He asked the man, when will the end of this year come? Matthias said 10 days from today. He apologizes, he is not an adventurer and is not influenced by this man, but he introduced Haru to him anyway. He would like her to leave here, even for a short time, but for this she needs a master. Deijiro thought that even if there are some advantages, they are interpreted differently for everyone. He told this man that the last question, how much does Haru cost? Matthias said 100,000 in the usual case, but if he fulfills all the conditions, then 30,000. Deijiro thought that his sold vest had the same value. If he fulfills her condition, it will be 3 million yen. One gold coin is equal to 1 million yen and at a normal price of 10 million yen. He can buy it if he spends all the money he has, but he certainly won't buy it. After all, this is a fairly high price. Her position is pathetic, but it's legitimate. If he's as emotional, he'll buy every slave he meets. He won't get any credit for doing this. He needs to use the guild. He can just rent a single one. What he needs now is himself. Moreover, if he buys a slave, he will have to pay taxes and spend savings on him as well. He shouldn't have mixed thoughts. Before trying to adhere to rational thinking, he should look at how others look at him. Should he continue to insist on this? He has been reborn in this world, and he even has unique skills. This goddess also told him to enjoy his new life here. Well, how can he enjoy it if he can't even buy this one that he likes? He couldn't stand it and said this was his chance to do what he wanted. He has to buy Haru. If this person buys her, then maybe she will be happier than when she was one. But he will not regret what he wanted to do. There are only 10 days left until the end of the year. After 9 days, he must challenge Haru and defeat her, and until then, he must become much stronger. He's new to this world, and that's why he doesn't know anything about it. However, with what he has, he should already be stronger. Deijiro came to the clothing store again and said that this man was here. Did the girl tell him that's what it looks like? Now she understands. He can't enter the guild that belongs to the royal family, and he also can't get any information about the slaves. And that's exactly why he came to a former adventurer like her, right? What an adventurer does and what he thinks about are two different things. If he's weak, he won't be able to get information, and those who say these simple words are all crap. He seems to want to become an adventurer, and how he desperately wants to help the slave. It's all settled now. If the white wolves have to obey someone weaker, they will prefer to die if possible. However, if you put an Arab collar on them, they will no longer be able to do so. They will be obliged to obey the order. If there is something that is more terrible for them than death, and it continues for a long period, then of course they will not be happy. So, she wants to clarify something. What is he going to do? Deijiro said that he would become stronger than her. He has to buy it. The girl smiled and said that it all depends on his characteristics. However, in any case, do not dissuade him so that he should not lose his resolve. 
She will only help those who have a strong fighting spirit. Let him wait here for a minute. After a while, the girl came back and brought the armor with her, which she gave to Dejiro. She said it suited him. Dejiro asked if it was really all for him. The girl said that in this city you can only buy weapons in the guild. He can't let these shops know about him, can he? Dejiro thanked Magnet for his help. Magnet said that as she thought, it fits him just perfectly. Dejiro asked that these were her old things, right? Magnet said that this armor belonged to her best friend when she was an adventurer. He was as sweet as he was, and she loved him very much. However, he was killed by a monster. She didn't have as much fun with anyone as she did with him, so she gave up research, and now she stopped being a man, too. Dejiro thought that, of course, it was very touching, but why refuse to be a man? He told Magnet that, but these are her memories. They are very important to her. Magnet said she thought he would be happy if anyone took advantage of her at all. Dejiro said he would try his best. Magnet said that it was fine, then let him do his best. He can drop by her house in the evening. Dejiro, after meeting Magnet, went alone to the dungeon and said that before going into the maze, he needed to check his characteristics. Magnet said that if he has a sword, he will become a swordsman trainee when he reaches level 2 of mastery. He opened his status window. He now had a gun bag, shoulder pads, and boots. Ikenoji said that the tycoon also said that he should not just hold the sword, but use it for its intended purpose. He tried to take the sword correctly, but it was difficult for him. He said that he should quickly raise the skill level to 5. Then he reached the gate and met the girl again, whom he met one time when he came to the city. Ikenoji asked her why she was guarding this gate now. The girl asked him that he was going to the maze, didn't she? She switched shifts, so now she's guarding here. When he goes inside, he must be careful, because it is rumored that some newcomers died there. Recently, there were even rumors that there were thieves there. Ikenoji was very scared by her words, but he said that it was probably just a rumor. The girl said that, however, they were always there so he didn't have to worry. She will patrol there from time to time, so they can meet in the maze. Ikenoji said he would love to. The girl told him to be careful there. After that, he went inside this dungeon. Ikenoji said that there are werewolves everywhere on this level. Since he can't use the sword right now, he'll have to kill them with it, luring them out one at a time. He was holding a small stone in his hands right now. He hid nearby because he saw a monster. Ikenoji looked out and thought that this monster still hadn't noticed him. Good, now he needs to get ready. He should just calm down. One hit and it's over. But he didn't even have time to adjust himself, as he was already attacked by two of these werewolves. Ikenoji was very scared and rushed to the leak. He said there were two of them now, so he'd had enough. Even those with a large number of skills will lose the advantage in this situation. The only way to kill them is to separate them. While he was running from them, he didn't even notice that the werewolves had already surrounded him. Here, nearby, he noticed two people who told them to help, because the newcomer is in danger here. The girl said that he has a sword, but he doesn't use it. It turns out that he's a level 1 swordsman trainee, right? Should they help him? The guy told this girl, whose name is Alice, that they should make a bet. Werewolves are that newbie, who's going to win? Alice asked what this bet was really for him. He only fights with a stone. The guy told her that she should do her best. After that, he turned to Ikenoji and said that they were raising the level through constant battles. Alice said it was true. Ikenoji asked if he didn't want to help him. The guy told him that the researchers were rivals. Although he is not going to help, he will be morally supported by it, so let him fight. Ikenoji looked at the werewolves who were now staring at Alice and her companion and said that they had noticed them. Alice grinned and told those werewolves not to come any closer. After that, the werewolves turned back to Ikenoji. The guy did not expect this and asked if they really turned around. He was surrounded again. Ikenoji thought that he only needed to kill one werewolf in order to level up. There is simply no other way for him. He took to his heels and said he just had to keep running. Then he stopped abruptly and turned around. He said it was a trick for them to start chasing him. And now you need to kill him with one hit. He thought that he should just calm down, because he just needs to calm down and hit one time, like when he was killing rabbits. You need to hit their weak spot, and it's on their neck. Ikenoji was about to strike, but then the werewolf bit him. He screamed loudly in pain. Alice sighed and said that he had been bitten. The guy next to her said that he couldn't even escape from low-level monsters. Ikenoji said it hurt so much. Let him let him go already. Somehow he managed to knock down this werewolf, and then with a sharp movement he tore off his head. After he killed this Ikenoji werewolf, he asked what level he had now. He immediately called up the status window and made sure that his level had not been raised. This surprised him greatly, and he asked, what, are there really no new notifications? Is it because he's in the middle of God right now and because of that he can't raise the level? He looked at these monsters and thought they seemed more knowledgeable. 
he can't let his escape route be blocked, because right now it's a great chance to separate them. And then he received a notification saying that his level had been raised. Ikenoji said that, as expected from an RPG, the system informed him that the swordsman skill, the trainee sword is equipped. A swordsman trainee skill called the cut has been learned. The trainee swordsman has been studied. The skill called no job has been upgraded from level 2 to level 3. There is no job skill called job verification has been received. There was an automatic change of profession to civilian, level 15. Ikenoji began to feel more confident now and said that after increasing the level, his body feels lighter, and it is full of energy, now that he can use the sword. After that, he took out his sword and destroyed one werewolf with one swing. He said it was a default skill. It is activated when a person draws a sword. His body is adapting better than he expected. He couldn't move that fast before. The other world is so amazing. He's going to try a new skill now. After that, he used his skill called Slash and attacked two other werewolves. Ikenoji looked very happy right now and said that he wanted to try flying and fighting it would be very cool. He has rediscovered his status. The system informed him that his level had been raised. The trainee swordsman's skill called Rotating Cut has been obtained. The bow and arrow hunter skill has been obtained. The hunter's skill called Slicing has been obtained. Ikenoji also discovered some kind of stone and asked that it was a magic stone that Magnet had told him about, wasn't it? They can be sold at the guild, so he thinks he needs to take it with him. Can claws also be useful to him? I wonder what his status is now, so he decided to check it out right now. Ikenoji said that statistics are divided into different characteristics, and their sum will be his entire strength. The more places he has to work, the more likely it is that the indicators will be higher. In this world, the average number of HP is 50, but he has much more. He had 30 horsepower, and now he has 11. This means that if he is bitten three times, he will die. Minus two mana, it's probably because he used a slash. That means he's in danger now. Then I heard a conversation behind me. The guy said that you have to like him in order to become stronger. It's not a bad thing. And as he promised, he went up to Alice and said that now her lips were his. Alice looked at him with loving eyes and said that her Joffrey. She thought that this time his lips would be hers. Ikenoji just silently watched them as he did not know how to behave in this situation at all and how to react to it. He said that he had recently gained an ability called job verification. So he decided to try it on them now. He saw that Joffrey was a trainee swordsman and Alice is a whip user. This surprised Ikenoji a little. At that moment, he noticed that someone was coming towards him. He applied his skill again and saw that it was a guard trainee. It was the same girl who was standing at this maze. The girl immediately came up to him and asked if he was okay. Is he hurt? Ikenoji said there was no problem. The girl handed him a small bottle and told him to take it. It's a potion. One such a potion is given to everyone. It is just designed for such cases. Ikenoji accepted the potion and thanked her. He opened it and drank it immediately, however, he didn't like the taste at all, so he spat it out and said it was too bitter. The girl laughed and said that although it wasn't tasty, she thought it was very good for his wound. She's on her way to the lower floors now. She'll be back at the gate in three hours. Don't let him overwork himself too much. Ikenoji said that he was fine and thanked her again. After the girl left, he said that as he thought, he was not used to it, and that was why he was already tired both physically and mentally. His level is fine now, so he thinks that's enough for today. When he was done in the maze with all his business, he returned back to the Magnet. Magnet was already waiting for him and said that, judging by his face, she thought that he had been overtaken by a great success. He's tired, isn't he? She has a guest room, so he can stay here if he wants to, of course. Ikenoji asked, is that really true? Magnet asked that he wanted to help this slave, right? And she promised to help him to the end, so don't let him be shy. Ikenoji thanked her for her help. He said that she helped him a lot, starting with the equipment and ending with special treatment. He will do everything to repay the debt. Magnet said that this was not necessary at all. However, if he insisted so much, then she would be very pleased if he used his body. Ikenoji immediately thought of something very vulgar. But Magnet pointed to the box and told him to use his body to move these things for her. He doesn't like sleeping on a bed, does he? Ikenoji was very confused, so he told her to get it sorted out faster. Magnet suggested that he do it together. The tycoon easily picked up this box along with Ikenoji himself. The guy wondered if it could be called moving together. After that, Magnet thanked him and said that it was much easier when a man helped. Everything is done in the blink of an eye. Ikenoji apologized and said he couldn't help with the light. Magnet said that she would cook dinner and let him rest for now and wait a little. Ikenoji said it was good. 
and when she left, he said that he needed to use this free time to summarize all that he had. Since he develops 400 times faster than an ordinary person, he may not be particularly attentive to the little things. He checked his status and said that everything was fine. The trainee swordsman has reached level 2. His ability is just amazing. He's getting stronger. He will become even stronger in the future. Magnet was setting the table at that time and said that he was so serious about it. Ikenoji returned to her. Magnet said that if only part of that attitude was with her. Ikenoji said that it was enough to joke. Magda told him that dinner was ready, so let him go and change his clothes. Ikenoji thought she was making hot water for him. The girl told him to put the dirty clothes in the basket near the bathroom, and she would wash them. She will check the smell of the clothes before washing. Ikenoji was very embarrassed again. Magnet said she was just joking. Let him just change his clothes, otherwise he'll catch a cold. Ikenoji went into the next room and started changing clothes. He said that Magnet cares so much about him. Just like a brother, no, just like a sister or what. He can't stay in her debt for long. He has to do something. And then he turned around and saw Magnet behind him, who was spying on him. He asked her what she was doing. Did she really want him to get angry? Magnet covered her face with her hands and said she didn't see anything. Absolutely nothing. Ikenoji asked if she was still watching. Magnet quit and said he was a pervert. Ikenoji asked why she was acting like he was peeping. After he changed his clothes, he went out to the kitchen and sat down at the table. He said he looked great. He himself thought that all the food was made of meat. He asked her why there were three servings. The tycoon said that she definitely forgot to tell him. There is one more person staying here. Her name is Salu. He must have seen her, she's a sufferer who stands at the gate. She has a tanned face. Ikenoji immediately remembered this girl and said that he had met her today. She was guarding the gate at the maze. She said she would be back in three hours. Magnum asked that it wasn't Cole's, right? In that case, she should have returned by now. She must have lied and gone somewhere. At that moment there was a knock on the door, so I got up and went to open the door. She opened the door and saw a guard there. The man apologized for bothering her so late. Then I told her something. Magnet was horrified and asked if Salu had not returned from the maze yet. Ikenoji looked at them questioningly. Magnet returned back to the house and said that he wanted to know if Salu had returned home. According to the captain of the guard, she has been there for six hours, but she thinks that everything will be fine, because tomorrow they will send a search team to find her. And besides, Salu is not one of those who can be killed by monsters. Ikenoji asked her what was her idea to go and see. Magnet said they couldn't. The monsters become stronger the lower he descends into the maze, and he himself becomes more difficult. This is not a place to go thoughtlessly. There is also a high probability of encountering thieves in the maze. Ikenoji thought that the more he found out about him, the more he wanted to rush out to look for her, even if it was fatal. Maybe he can find Solo by scent. He thought about it and immediately remembered Haru. He decided not to waste time, so he quickly packed up and told Magnet that he had found a way to find her. He won't do anything dangerous, so don't let her worry about him. Let her just wait here. Magnet tried to stop him, but it was too late, as he had already run outside. After a while, he ran to Mathia's office. The man immediately remembered him and asked what motivated him to come to him. Ikenoji asked him to lend him Haru for another one day. He really needs her help right now. He needs to find one girl and with her sense of smell, the chance of finding her increases. Matthias said that it turns out. However, as a slave, the merchant cannot afford to rent her for such a dangerous task. If he wants to take a walk, he will turn a blind eye to it, however it is. Ikenoji didn't have time to talk to him, so he just took out a bag of gold and said that there were 20,000 gold coins here. After he sells the suit, he will have the same amount, so let him take it as an advance payment. He's begging him. Matthias turned to Haru and asked her what she thought about it. Haru said that she has a sword and she wants to lend a helping hand. This feeling hasn't changed even when she became a slave, so she wants to help him. Matthias said that then he would fulfill her request and return her sword to her. Haru got her sword back and happily said that he hadn't sold them. After that, she turned to Ikenoji and said that he should let her help. Matthias told them to be careful there. Ikenoji thought that thanks a lot to them, because now they can go to the maze. He and Haru immediately ran out of Mathia's office, and the two of them rushed to the maze. Haru asked him that Salu was his mistress, right? Ikenoji said no, she was a resident of the same hotel, but she also helped him get out of the maze. Until recently, he didn't even know her name. Haru asked, then what is the point of such a rush? Ikenoji said he just wanted to help a little bit. Maybe she'll find it strange, but he can't sit around and ignore this situation. Haru said she understood him. 
After a while, they finally reached the maze and had already entered it. Ikenoji said this was the last place he saw her. What now? Haru started sniffing and said there were too many smells. She can't do anything. She turned to him and asked if he had something with the smell of Salu. Ikenoji handed her a small bottle and asked if it would be suitable. She gave it to him recently. Haru sniffed it and said she felt something. There's a werewolf in front of them. The girl immediately reached for her weapon and told Ikenoji to leave it to her. But Ikenoji came forward and told the girl not to worry, because he would deal with him himself. He used his skill called incision and chopped off this werewolf's head. The werewolf was defeated. He sighed and said that was it. The system informed him that he had raised his level. And he also got a skill called explaining abilities. Ikenoji was surprised and thought that was the explanation. Right. And then the system explained everything to him. He received a message saying that explanation is an assessment skill. A level 40 unemployed person is required. It is also used to get information about abilities. The skills that can be tested are limited to the acquired skills of the person himself or his companions. Ikenoji thought that this information had suddenly appeared in his head. He doesn't really understand how the skill works, but I wonder if he'll be able to explore other people's abilities. And he decided to test it now. He thought about his abilities. New information appeared in his head, in which it was said that the setting of the work is level 3. Installation of three types of profession. Level 30 of the unemployed is required. You can set up to three professions. In order to change two or three professions, the user must have the skill to change a profession. Ikenoji thought it would definitely come in handy for those skills he didn't know. He turned to Haru and said that they needed to continue their search. Haru looked a little surprised and said that it was about the ability he used. Ikenoji got a little nervous and asked what was wrong with her. Haru said it was just a powerful ability for a trainee swordsman. Ikenoji said that no, he is not even a swordsman, however, he cannot tell all the details. Haru put her head down and said she understood, so she wouldn't bother him anymore. She sniffed again and said that the smell was leading them here. Ikenoji said that then they should go. It's just that some phenomena, when they reached the stairs that led down to Haru, stopped and told him that they were going down to the floor below. The monsters are much stronger there, so he has to be careful. Ikenoji said they had to go. And by the way, she doesn't have to call him master at all. Haru asked why he was saying that, and she called him a master again. Ikenoji said that because he had heard that the White Wolf Clan believed that death could only be worse as submission to a weaker one, so let her treat him as her comrade. Haru didn't answer him at all. Ikenoji looked at her questioningly. The girl apologized and said that she could not carry out this order. He has a power that is stronger than her. But they have to hurry now, because the safety of Salu is now the main task. The two of them reached the second floor of the maze. Ikenoji said they were on the right track, but he looked out from their hiding place and said that these monsters were here. He would let them test his incision. But Haru stopped him and said that he should let her prove herself. He didn't stop her, so he let her do it. Haru immediately rushed forward and dealt with all these monsters. Ikenoji was shocked and thought it was so fast. And she's so strong. I wonder what her level is. In order to buy Hara, a person must be stronger than her. Is it necessary to collect information now? He activated his skill called Profession Check. He found out that Haru was a level 23 swordsman. The girl turned to him and told him to strike the last blow. Ikenoji didn't really understand what she meant. Haru said that only the one who hits her last gets experience. Didn't he know about it? Ikenoji thought that was why she beat them up but didn't kill them. It looks like that's how slaves fight. But he didn't agree with that, so he told her she had to kill them. Haru asked if he was sure. Ikenoji said he was glad she was worried about him. But she killed them so that the whole experience was hers. Next time, let her ignore him. The main priority is to save Salu, not farm experience. Haru said she understood. After that, they followed to the third floor of the maze. Ikenoji asked her that the smell was coming from there, right? Haru said yes. There's only one ladder in the maze, so judging by the smell, it's still here. It seems to her that she went down the stairs. Ikenoji looked in that direction and told her what he saw, but agreed with what she said. He asked her that the thieves were still not flowing in this maze. If they block the stairs, they will have no other escape routes. Haru said there are quite a few reasons for this. If someone dies here, the maze will swallow them up, so they won't leave any clues here. So it's impossible to say for sure whether a human or a demon killed him. The Knight's Order will activate if they attack a merchant. However, if they attack an adventurer, the Order will not do anything. The Adventurer's Guild and the Knight's Order have agreed that they will not help each other. It is clear that they are now under the protection of the kingdom. 
Ikenoji asked that, however, hadn't there been cases of thieves attacking newcomers before? Haru said that she thinks they are stealing the equipment of dying adventurers, because when a person dies and is devoured by the maze, the equipment disappears with him. Ikenoji said they were using dying adventurers. Then Haru told him to wait a minute. She looked out and said it was a goblin. Ikenoji thought that this was a great opportunity for him to raise his level, and it looked like he was only one here. Although he behaved nobly, it would be dangerous if he didn't raise his level now. If he kills this goblin and gets 400 times more experience from it, then he will clearly have an advantage. Haru was about to ask him for permission to deal with this monster, but he interrupted her and said that he should try first. He used his skill called incision, but this time the skill couldn't completely kill this monster. Ikenoji said he needed to do it again. He used his skill again, but the monster had just dodged. The guy said that after using the ability, you need to wait 10 seconds. There is even a skill recharge available. 10 seconds is not that long, but not now. The goblin continued to attack him. Ikenoji said he needed to find his weaknesses. The most vulnerable spot is here, so he hit this goblin between the legs. He grinned and asked the monster what hurt, didn't it? Even if he's from a different species, he's still a man, so let him get it. But then Haru told him that all goblins are girls. Ikenoji looked at Haru in surprise. The goblin decided to take advantage of the fact that he was distracted now, so he decided to attack him. Haru shouted at Ikenoji to dodge, but he didn't have time to do it. The goblin caught him. Haru shouted at him that 10 seconds had already passed so let him use the skill on him. He can do it even without the ball. Ikenoji did just that. He used his skill called Slash again, and this time he killed a goblin. The system informed him that he had raised his level. A new hunter skill called Search Intuition was also obtained. As soon as he got this new skill, he immediately activated the skill explanation in order to find out what kind of skill it was and how it worked. An explanation for this skill immediately appeared in his mind. It's a combat skill. A level 15 hunter is required. The user can sense the presence of living creatures nearby, however, does not work on creatures with the hiding skill. Ikenoji thought that this ability looked very useful. Haru told him that it was wonderful. Ikenoji told her that it was all because of her advice, so thank her very much. And now they need to continue their search. But then Haru told him that it was about Solo's scent. She went that way. Ikenoji then told them to hurry up. They went in the direction Haru had indicated. Ikenoji asked her if there was a chance that she had returned, but had gone the other way. Haru shook her head negatively. She said there were a lot of smells, but none of them smelled like Salu. She didn't want to be a pessimist, but the smell of Salu stops here. Now there is no indication that Salu is in the maze. Ikenoji said it was for real. He clutched his head and thought, is Solo really dead? What will the tycoon say? But then Tun sensed something and told Haru that he could feel a strange aura from there. It comes from this wall. Maybe his search intuition worked, and that's why he felt it. Haru asked him if he really had the abilities of a hunter. Ikenoji said it was a very long story, so they'd better look for clues and look around first. She said that the trail ends here, which means that there is a secret passage here. He began to feel the entire wall in the hope of finding some kind of button or detail that would open a passage for them. But then he walked through the wall. Haru was scared. Ikenoji hastened to calm her down and said that everything was fine. There is a passage here. Haru said that this is an illusory type of gate, and they are used in secret chambers. Ikenoji said it was understandable. She has to go through and see it all. He held out his hand to her and told her to take his hand. He took her hand and asked her why she was so soft. But it just dawned on him. He blushed deeply and thought that he was really touching her breasts now. But even though he doesn't see it, it's a feeling. He apologized to her and said he didn't mean to grope her. Haru immediately went over that wall and said that they had a lot of loot, so he should come here. Ikenoji was surprised and asked what she was saying. But Haru told him to be quiet. Ikenoji blushed again and thought she was too close. Haru told him to be quiet for a minute. It seems that this is a base of thieves and several smells are mixed here at once. They need to be very careful, and that's why they need to pretend that they came from a robbery. Ikenoji said loudly that that was all for today, now they need to go back. He himself whispered to Haru, wondering if Saul was okay. Haru also said loudly that they should go well, and she whispered back that she couldn't smell blood, so she was probably alive. She asked him if he knew the exact number of thieves. Ikenoji said he doesn't know if it's thieves or not, but then there are three around the corner, and one more behind them. Haru offered to take a closer look at them. Meanwhile, the thieves were sitting in their small room. One of them said that all the guys looked like they had finally left. Their boss hasn't returned yet. It took a lot of effort to grab the girl the boss wanted, but he had to notice that this was a beautiful girl. 
why not try it? To which he was told that even if he didn't try, the boss would kill him. The man with his hair pulled back asked where the booze was. The other two have left, but have not yet returned. Ikenoji, along with Haru, peeked and eavesdropped on them. Ikenoji said it looks like Solo is safe and it looks like their boss and recruits haven't come yet. She's in the room behind them, and this is a great chance. They need to go out and kill two of them with the slash skill, and they will kill the last one together. After which, the two of them took out their weapons. They came out of their hiding place and immediately attacked the thieves. They immediately killed one of them. Ikenoji stopped and applied a profession check. He told Haru that the man on the right is a level 9 swordsman, and the one on the left is level 18. The guy behind is a level 5 archer. The swordsman was very surprised and asked, What the hell is this? How did he learn their profession so quickly? The thief asked if they had been snitched on, but Haru had already killed them at the same moment. Ikenoji was still very impressed by her skills and thought it was so fast. So that's the strength of a level 23 swordsman. After that, they went to the locked door and decided to open it. The natural door was locked. Paru asked the master to move away, after which she destroyed this door with one movement. Ikenoji immediately burst into this room and saw Sola, who was unconscious now, and she was naked. She was wearing only underpants. The guy was very embarrassed and thought that he couldn't look at it. He turned to Haru, to whom he handed the clothes and said that she should put something on her. Haru said it was fine. Ikenoji turned away and said he was glad he had brought his spare clothes with him. It's a solo spear, so he thinks he needs to take it. He'll take all the guns while they're still here. He turned to the girls and said they needed to get back. He felt something again and told Haru that someone was approaching. Haru asked if it could be their boss. Ikenoji said to hide Sola inside. Haru told him to get ready for battle. Meanwhile, the boss of these thieves came. He told everyone that he was back. But since no one answered him, he asked what was wrong with them. The silence continued. The man asked if they couldn't hear him. Then Ikenoji appeared in front of him. The man asked what he had done right. Ikenoji used his skill again to determine who he was. This man was a level 14 bandit. He told Haru about it and asked if she could handle him. Haru looked scared and said no, if, for example, a level 20 axe bandit commits some serious crime, then he will be a high-ranking fugitive. He is stronger than the swordsman, so their chances of winning are not great. The man was just incredibly angry. He asked what he was asking him, what did he do? Ikenati got scared himself and told the boss that they had been drinking too much, and that's why they passed out. He looked at the man and thought that he knew he wouldn't buy into something like that. The man asked if it was a boy and a girl, right? He smiled and said that he could see that they had just been recruited, right? He turned to him and said he needed alcohol, so let them bring it. Ikenoji thought he was such a fool. He told this boss that he had run out of money. I thought that all the real beginners went to buy it. The boss looked at his subordinates who were unconscious and asked that they were drunk to the core, right? Well, who's going to run? Ikenoji said he could see they had drunk everything so they were going to go out and buy more. The man got angry and asked that wasn't this girl a slave. Maybe he will explain. Ikenoji got scared and said that in fact this girl is his mistress. She was deceived and sold to a slaver in order to free her. He is ready to go against the slaver, and that is why he hired. The boss said that's why he turned to them. The most famous bandits in this region, isn't he right? Now the man looked very angry and as if he was about to attack them. Ikenoji tensed and already reached for his sword in order to repel the attack of this man. He thought it wasn't good. It looks like he overdid it. He'll easily guess that it's a lie. He screwed up. But then this man in front of them started crying. He said he was having such a hard time. He always sympathizes with a loser like him. Ikenoji didn't expect this and thought, is he really that kind of person? The man looked at his subordinates who were unconscious and said that he did not forgive anyone who would not drink his drink. It's true. The man took his axe and went to his subordinates. Ikenoji asked him to wait a minute, and he thought, what is he doing? The man asked what about it. They have two newbies, so nothing will be lost from one. After that, he went up to his subordinate and cut off his head. Ikenoji thought that they were mocking him, or what? He killed his ally for drinking his drink. The man laughed contentedly and said that killing people was the fastest way to gain experience. Ikenoji thought that they needed to leave as soon as possible. He told the boss that he would go and buy more drinks. But Haru interrupted him and said no, she had to go. Ikenoji disagreed with her and said that it was impossible. Let them just let him go, because he has to buy alcohol. The man grinned and called Ikenoji a brat. He told him that he was leaving and quickly. The girl doesn't look too bad, so he'll play with her. Ikenoji smiled and told the man that he had told him that she was his mistress. The man became angry and asked what he had heard, what he had said. 
Haru took his hand and told him that everything was fine, so let him go. Everything will be fine. Ikonoji said there was no way he would leave her alone in such a dangerous place. He has already died once, so no one will be able to cope with the fear of death. After that, he turned to this man and asked what he was worth. The boss said to let him come closer to him. He'll take it for his dying words. The man said that his face had turned pale. Does he already regret trying to be a hero? Ikonoji took out his sword and said that it looked like there was no other way out. He cut off the heads of all the remaining allies of this man. The boss asked, what did he do? The system informed Ikonoji that he had raised the level. Profession swordsman and archer are unlocked. The unemployed person has moved to level 4. Improved swordsman skills. The hunter's skill called presence has become level 2. The swordsman's skill called the cut has become level 2. The automatic installation of professions has replaced the unemployed of level 4 with a civilian, level 15. The profession has been temporarily changed to a level 4 swordsman. Ikonoji thought he had just killed a man. If he kills a person with the same level as him, then he gets 800 times more experience. He has to do it. He wants to protect Haru. The boss got angry and said he would kill him. Ikonoji dodged his attack in time and thought, what kind of power is this? If he hits it at least once, then that's the end of it. Haru rushed past him, and he told her to stop, because she couldn't handle him. But Haru did not listen to him and attacked this man. The man said it was a little sick. Then he hit her and asked her if she really thought she could handle him. He'll take care of her later, so let her be a good girl and keep her head down. Ikonoji got very angry and attacked the boss, but it did not cause him serious injuries. The man said it was so weak. After that, he rushed to the attack himself. Ikonoji thought that despite his appearance, he was moving very fast. How could he swing this huge axe at such a speed? He needs to come up with something. The man said that no matter what plan he came up with, he would never be able to overcome it. Although even if he doesn't have a plan, he still won't be able to convince. He just came up with something interesting. He will let him live, but at the same time he will cut off his limbs and make a puppet of him. And he will start playing with the bodies of these girls right in front of his eyes. He will soon regret speaking out against him. Ikonoji swung his sword at him again and told him to shut up. The man grinned and said that he had missed again. But still, this time he managed to inflict a minor injury. He cut the man's cheek. The man attacked him again and said it was a great punch. Ikonoji thought that he was starting to get used to his movements. However, if the battle dragged on for an inexperienced beginner, how could it end in disaster? He has to wait until he finishes his attacks. When he keeps his distance, he often attacks with strong but not fast attacks, and this is his chance. He just needs to wait for this moment in order to kill him. The man attacked him again, but this time Ikonoji tried to repel his attack with his sword. He succeeded, but his sword was broken. Ikonoji asked that why did it break down at such a critical moment. The man laughed and said what a shame. Ikonoji asked if they were serious right now. Does he need to fight this guy with rocks or something? The man kept coming and said it was time for him to die. But at that moment, Ikonoji attacked him with a stone, after which the man collapsed on the spot. He was surprised and asked if he had really won. But it looks like he's not dead yet. His body did not disappear. It serves him right. He immediately ran up to Haru, who asked if she was okay. Haru woke up and said he had to get out of here fast. Ikonoji said that it was okay for the bandits to lose to him, so she should hurry up and drink this potion. Haru thanked him. She stared at him and said that she was really happy now. He named her Haru. She is glad that he calls her by her first name. Ikonoji was embarrassed and said that it was simple. Anyway, he's glad she's okay. But then he heard voices. The guy asked what and what should they do with this bandit now? Maybe they'll just kill him. And what does it all mean? These were the same guys Ikonoji had met at the beginning of the maze. The guy asked why the boss sleeps in such a place. Alice said that, of course, she lifts, that it's warm here, but sleeping on the floor is somehow. Then they saw Ikonoji. The guy asked if it wasn't the new guy. Alice said he was right. Doesn't he know it's dangerous here? There are bandits everywhere, so he has to hurry home. Ikonoji asked that this guy is the head of the bandits, right? If that's the case, then he just defeated him. The guy laughed and said he understood. If their leader was defeated by a novice, then it turns out that they were not so strong. So what are they going to do with this guy now? Ikonoji said he was thinking of keeping him alive. He planned to kill him, but he doesn't think it needs to be done right now. The guy said that if they hadn't killed him now, it would have been such a waste. However, if they brought him to the guild alive, they would be well rewarded. Alice said that if they didn't want to, they could help them carry it, but in return they would share the reward with them. Ikonoji said he still has to bring Sola home, and he's afraid that the two of them are unlikely to carry him to the guild. 
However, he thinks that they still need to bring proof that they defeated the bandits. He asked Haru what she thought about it. Haru said that she completely agreed with him. Ikenoji said that since they had dealt with the bandits, they could look at their loot. He only sees this wooden chest. I wonder what is so valuable here. He opened this chest and saw only stones there. After that, he said that now they need to go back. They all gathered together and moved towards the exit. The guy said there was no need to show mercy to the bandits. Alice said they were enemies. Ikenoji asked them that maybe they should go easy on him. Didn't they think so? Then Salu woke up, who was now on his back. She asked, where is she? Ikenoji lowered her to the ground. Salu asked what happened to her. After that, Ikenoji told her everything. Solo thanked him. She said that although she was the person who drew attention to the bandits, she got to them herself. She is very ashamed. And by the way, why are Jeff and Alice here? Ikenoji said that something happened while she was sleeping. He asked her if she really knew these two. Salu said the two are known for causing a lot of trouble, but it's all within the law. For the Guardian, they are one big headache. They don't report anything serious, but their pranks are annoying. But she didn't expect them to become subordinates of bandits. Jeff said they didn't do anything, so you can't call them henchmen. Alice said they didn't even know who their boss was. She said she was asking them to stay at their base overnight. Jeff said they didn't even do anything. Alice said they were only assigned some small tasks. Salu said that if they wanted to get free faster, they should take this guy back. Alice asked what it meant that they were cleared of all charges. Salu said they would talk about it as soon as they got to headquarters. After they came out to the word, the guy she works with came up and he asked her if she was okay. Salu said yes. Due to her carelessness, she was caught by bandits and these guys saved her. The man said that he understood and thanked them for their help. Salu pointed at the boss and said that this guy also seemed to be the leader of the bandits. The man asked if it was really serious. If that's the case, then they need to take him to jail. By the way, Jeff and Alice have caused some trouble again, haven't they? Ikenoji thought they were being called by their first names. Even the guards looked like they really knew them very well. After that, she told Saul everything. The man said it was understandable. They can leave the rest to him. He asked Sola if it was time for her to come home. Magnet is very worried about her. They will talk about this incident in the morning. The man turned to Ikenoji and Haru and thanked them for saving Sola. He said that on behalf of the officer of the guards, he was giving him his greatest praise. The reward for this bandit will be delivered to the Adventurer's Guild, so have him come in tomorrow morning and pick it up. Ikenoji suggested that Haru go back to his house first, and then go to the mattress. Haru said that she couldn't really go back to him now, because everything was already closed. Ikenoji then suggested that she go with him to the Magnet. Meanwhile, Salu had already returned home. Magnet hugged her and said she was glad she was free. Ikenoji told her that her hugs hurt me. Magnet thanked him too. Ikenoji took out a broken sword and said he was really sorry, but he broke this sword. Magnet said that this thing had already served well for his and Saul's protection. She is sure that it was the will of the previous owner and therefore she wants to thank him again. She's going to hug him now. Salu said that Magnet was a warrior with a fairly high level of strength, so it was quite difficult to get out of her arms. Magnet told her not to talk about it. She's just a tailor now. Ikenoji applied his skill on her and found out that she was a level 38 tailor. He thought that so far, this was the highest level he had seen. Magnet turned to the girl and asked that she was Haru, right? Ikai talked about her. She patted her on the head and said thank you for helping to save Saul. Why can't this girl become her little sister? Salu said that she already has a sister and taking a new one is somehow not sisterly. Magnet started hugging her again and said she was getting jealous again. She turned to Haru and asked, What, why doesn't she stay for dinner tonight? She cooked a lot of meat. Ikenoji supported her and told the girl that the food here was simply excellent. Haru said that, but she's just a slave. Ikenoji said he knows that. Haru said that's why she's only booked to eat Arabic food. Ikenoji said he understood, but she had come all this way, and was probably hungry. Haru said that she was just a slave. If they get used to good food, it will be difficult for them, because the food of slaves and normal food are different. Therefore, they should limit themselves to eating. Well, you can probably forgive one time. Ikenoji turned to Magnet and asked if it was okay. Haru is a slave. Magnet said it had nothing to do with it here, so they should go eat already. Haru wanted to say something, but Magnet interrupted her and said that nevertheless it would be a crime if one of them used their food. Ikenoji told Haru to ignore it and join them. Magnet told Saul that why not help her prepare the meal. Salu said that, of course. Ikenoji turned to Haru and asked what she thought of him now. Is he strong enough to defeat her? 
Horace said that, of course, he defeated the head of the bandits, against whom she had no chance. Ikenoji said that it turns out that he is strong, right? Haru said yes. Ikenoji said he was going to buy it. Haru burst into tears. She said she was very happy. She is really very happy, but she thinks he already knows this, but there is one noble who wants to buy her. This man donated a huge amount of money to the guild. If he buys it, then in the future there is much more danger on his way than he can imagine. Ikenoji said that he wasn't going to join the Adventurers Guild anyway. He can easily ask for money to be collected for him. And if that happens, he will be badly spoken of in the guild. Haru said that she thinks they will do it outright, but they may have reduced the bounty on the bandit's head to get him to give it up. She doesn't want to be abandoned by him, but his care is enough for her now. Ikenoji said he would come up with something, so don't let her worry. Even if his magic stones sell for half the price, then they just need to find more of them. You can always do this by hunting monsters. If he forced her to live in such conditions, it would be unfair. Haru disagreed with him and said that the White Wolf tribes were a wandering clan. They don't have a special place of residence if they are able to live such a life then. He told her that the only thing that mattered now was her opinion. She shouldn't worry about the nobles or his thoughts. What does she want? Let her speak. Haru asked if she said she wanted to go with him, would it be right? He hugged her and said that he was really happy that she was staying with him. Magnet and Salu were spying on her all the time. Magnet told him that if he had already finished chatting, then why didn't he hurry up and go eat? The food will get cold, but something tells her that it's getting hot in here, she's right, right. Ikenoji asked her that since when has she been here? The next day he went to the mattress and told him everything. The man said he understood. Here is a certificate that allows you to own a Haru. There is an Arabic collar and other accessories. If the certification is lost, then another owner can take the Hara. He just shouldn't lose her. Ikenoji said he wouldn't. He's a little nervous. The man said that all the papers would be kept in the trading market. But for this you need to pay a small fee. This completes the entire certification process. He's counting on him. Haru was already packing her things. Ikenoji asked the man that just out of caution, does anyone know that he is buying it? The man said that at the moment when he said he would take her with him to rescue Sola. He thought he could come over and when he found out about her situation, he immediately rushed to help. Ikenoji said that's not the case. At that moment, he wasn't strong yet. The man said that the power that Haru was looking for was coming from her heart. When a person gets into trouble and he rushes to his aid, does this already make him really strong? Ikenoji asked what the terms of her loss were then. The man said that in the face of the danger of the force, his heart would be opened and Haru would see it while fighting him. Even if she wins, but realizes that he has a kind heart and a strong will, then she will choose him. Ikenoji asked if this man was stronger than her, but he didn't have those qualities, like that bandit, for example. The man said that in this case she would blame herself for not being strong enough and would meekly accept her fate. Ikenoji said that what is the harsh condition? He himself thought it was like some kind of blessing that she had chosen him. He was really very lucky. Then Haru came to them, who apologized for waiting. The girl changed into other clothes, which greatly surprised Ikenoji. The man said that they were given free equipment to the store for every slave they bought. Ikenoji walked up to her and stroked her head. He said that these clothes suit her very well. Haru thanked the two of them. The man saw them off and finally said that he would hope that their path would be safe. Ikenoji told him that he should take care of himself, not them. Haru thanked the man for what he had done for her. Ikenoji approached her and offered to throw a party at the guild. And again, he really hopes for mutual help. Haru said that, of course, she would count on him. And now she has become his companion. The next morning, Ikenoji and Haru went to the Adventurer's Guild. Ikenoji said that he would like to form a group and receive a reward, and he would also like to sell magic stones. The girl looked at Haru and asked that she was his slave, right? Please let him show her the certification. Ikenoji immediately took out the necessary documents, said that, of course, here. The girl looked at his document carefully, and then said that it was good. Then she will start the registration procedure right now, have them fill out this form. Ikenoji and Haru immediately began to fill out the document. He thought it was true that he had recently started studying reading and writing. He was still. He turned to Haru, who asked if she could do it. Haru said it was fine. At that moment, a guy came up to Ikenoji and asked if it was true that he had become the owner of this slave. He doesn't want to waste time on him. He would spare him if he returned her back to where he got her from. Ikenoji thought he'd bring her back, right? The man started laughing at him and said he was angry. He was angry. Let him do it. Haru stood behind Ikenoji and looked scared. Haru told him that he was trying to provoke him. If he attacks one, he will be considered a criminal. 
he is trying to create a situation after which he will most likely be banned from entering the guild. Ikenoji said it was understandable. He applied his skill on this guy and realized that he was a level 18 fighter. The man clicked his tongue and said that looking at Saru's appearance, what a pain in the eyes. Ikenoji wondered if he was imagining it, or if the bandit leader had mentioned it before. He asked this guy what he meant by that. Haru explained to him that Sarasaru is a way of ensuring offending the beastmen tribes. Ikenoji looked at the girl, then turned his gaze to this guy and called him names. The man grinned and asked, what happened? Had he gone mad? Haru told Ikenoji, whom she still called master, that she didn't care what he said about her. Ikenoji sighed and asked her that fighting in the guild was forbidden? Right. Haru said yes. Ikenoji must have already thought of something. He turned to this guy again and said that he thought he was a subordinate of the guy who wanted to buy Haru. Apparently, that was the case, but the guy decided not to admit it and ask what he was talking about. What is it about? Does he mean to say that the noble wanted to buy a white wolf? And he knew that he had a huge influence on the guild, wasn't he right? He will arrive here in nine days, and if he cannot buy his beloved slave, he will be a disgrace to their family. And what happens to him after that is beyond his imagination. It is possible that someone will even die in this agony. Such in words as he will be crushed in a couple of seconds. So what's he scared of now? Haru couldn't stand it anymore, so I turned to my master and said that he should give her permission to kill this man. Even after death, she would not tolerate such an attitude towards the master. This man cannot be forgiven. Ikenoji told her to calm down and not submit to her anger. It's just a trap, so she shouldn't fall for his provocations. Haru calmed down and said that she understood. Ikenoji turned to the girl who was standing at the reception desk and said that he would not sell magic stones, so could he just take the rewards for that bandit? The girl said that, of course, she would bring it now. This guy turned to him again and asked him why he decided to run away. Right. They can fight in the arena. Ikenoji said that it's basically the same thing, and he doesn't really want to be a criminal. The guy asked him what he had forgotten, that fighting in the arena was completely allowed. It's right behind the guild. So what would he say to that? Is he brave enough to fight? And he wants to clarify one point. Killing an opponent in the arena is completely allowed. He also has the right to use any weapon. The man put his sword on the floor and said that it was because he was a master of the neighbor god. It can be very hard for a coward like him. Haru got angry again and told the master that she would fight him, so let him give her an order. Ikenoji told her to calm down again. He himself thought that she always copes with her problems so calmly, but when it comes to him, he told her that he definitely knows that she won't lose to him in the sword fight, and thank her for being so worried about him. However, since he is a fighter and specializes in close combat, this will cause problems. He will fight him himself. The guy said it sounded like the truth. Ikenoji said that, however, not today. This noble will arrive here in nine days, right, and they will fight on that day. Until then, let him stay away from them. The guy taunted him again and asked that he was trying to look cool, right? They'll watch him crush it with his bare hands. At that moment, a girl came with a reward for the capture of that bandit, and said that his reward was ready. Ikenoji said that it was fine, then they would go. The guy also decided to leave here and said a personal one last time so that they could enjoy the last moments of their lives. Haru started to get angry again. Ikenoji said that everything was fine. He would show him a huge gap in his power. He would crush his insignificant self-confidence into small pieces so that he would no longer be so arrogant. After they left the Adventurer's Guild, Haru asked him that he was planning to become a fighter, so she decided to tell him more about this profession. At level 5, a fighter can wield an axe. At level 7, he can use a hammer. And finally, at level 10, he turns into a fighter. But she doesn't know the process very well. Ikenoji said it was understandable. It looks like it's not going to be easy. Haru said yes. Ikenoji said that it was fine and suggested that she go to the maze after lunch. Haru said she would follow him anywhere. They passed by a small dining room, where they went in order to have a little snack. Ikenoji immediately sat down at the table and asked the girl why she didn't sit down. Haru apologized, then sat down on the floor next to him. Ikenoji didn't mean that at all, so he picked up the girl and said no, she should sit properly on a chair. Haru looked at him questioningly and asked if it would be okay if she sat on a chair. Ikenoji said that, of course. It would have been more strange if he had left her sitting on the floor. Haru was very nervous and said that usually slaves who enter such places. Ikenoji already understood that she was going to say that. He said that it was good he was unusual here, so let her just sit on a chair. Haru listened to him and sat down next to him, but she was still very worried. The waitress came up to them and said that they should choose what they want from the menu and she put a mug of water on the table. 
Ikanajin did not really understand this gesture and asked if the water was really free. Haru said yes, it's free. Ikanoji asked that then why did they only give one glass? Haru explained to him that water is given only to those who order food. And it seems that this restaurant does not provide cheap food for slaves. Ikanoji sighed after which he called the waitress names and said that he had chosen the order. He pointed at Haru and said that she was eating too, so could they have one more plate and two better dishes. The waitress smiled and said that the food would be ready soon. Haru asked him if what he did was okay. Ikanoji said that going into the maze with an empty stomach is somehow, and even if it's not, and yet, food is probably the best thing he can offer her. Haru was confused and said she understood. Thank him very much. After a while, food was brought to them, and they began to eat it. Ikanoji stared at Haru, who was happily eating all the food. Did he ask her that she was born into a wealthy family? Haru said that she would not say that they lived hard, but they were still far from a rich family. Ikanoji asked what, then how did she become a slave? It was a little hard for Haru to talk about it, and he noticed it right away, so he said she should keep it to herself. He apologized for going too far. Haru calmed him down and said that it was okay that he wanted to know what she had been through. Ikanoji said that he personally didn't want to force her to say it. She would tell him that when she wanted to, but he can promise her that no matter what reason she became a slave, he won't hate her. Haru thanked him and said that when the time comes, she will definitely tell him everything he wants to know. When they leave, did they go outside again and go on about their business? Ikanoji said that he needed to buy equipment for going to the maze. Haru said that the store is over there. They came to the item store. The girl told him that she would check these things for him. He himself thought that he also wanted to buy Haru a couple of things, such as an equipment bag and a storage bag. He approached the seller and asked if he was selling gear bags or storage bags. The seller asked what the equipment bag was, right? The saleswoman said something to him, which surprised him very much, and he asked what was an extremely valuable item. Not everyone can have one, right? He himself thought that they had given him such a valuable item for free. Thank them for that. Haru turned to him and asked what about the food. Ikanoji said they definitely needed to get some bread and dried meat. To be honest, he always wanted to eat like a real adventurer. Haru smiled and said that he was probably right too. They should take some energy drinks. Ikanoji agreed with her and said that there was also a flashlight. He asked her how many labyrinths are there in this city. Haru said that the maze is for beginners, intermediate and high level maze. She thinks that an intermediate one will suit them. Ikanoji said that it was fine, then they would go there. Haru said that although she still thinks that first you need to go to the maze for beginners, there is a boss on the 10th floor, if they defeat him, they will receive a reward. Ikanoji said that this is a bonus for completing. When they paid at the store, they went outside and decided to do so. Ikanoji asked if she had ever defeated a boss. Haru said yes. When she defeated him, she got a speed boost. Ikanoji said it sounded amazing. Then maybe he'll try to convince the boss. He himself thought that, however, in order to become a fighter, he first needed to change his profession. He revealed his status. The swordsman was level 4. The woodcutter was level 1. His jobless profession was level 52. The magician is a level 1 student. HP was 103 out of 103. MP was 53 out of 53. The physical attack was 89. The magic attack was 43. The speed was 42, the physical defense was 72, and the magic defense was 45. His luck was 40. He was equipped with fabric armor, leather boots and a light steel sword. He had skills such as changing a profession, setting up a profession, and making stones. A level 2 sword master, slash, profession check, rotating kick, bow master, level 2 slicing, explanation, search intuition and fencing enhancement. He didn't have any titles. He had switchable professions such as level 15 citizen, level 1 farmer, level 24 hunter, level 1 woodcutter, level 25 trainee swordsman, a level 1 magician, a level 1 merchant, a level 4 swordsman and a level 1 archer. He also had blessings, his experience is multiplied 20 times. It takes half experience to level up. He thought that he had become much stronger compared to what he was at the beginning. He turned to Haru, who asked if he could check the status of other people or even her. Haru said that of course he could. If this person agrees to this, then you will just need to give his name. Ikanoji asked, is it really that simple? And tried to open Haru's status. He found out that Haru is a level 23 swordsman by profession. Her HP is 103 out of 103. Her MP is 53 out of 53. Her physical attack is 132. Her magic attack is 20, physical protection was 105, and magic protection was 24. 
Her speed is 62 and her luck is 10. Equipment, a slave collar, a short sword, leather boots, a coat and a skirt. Her skills, master the bow, improve your swordsmanship and increase your speed. The acquired skills are the finisher of the maze, the leader of the party. Switchable professions, a level 15 citizen, a level 1 farmer, a level 5 hunter, the lumberjack of the first level, a level 25 swordsman trainee, a level 23 swordsman, and a level 1 swordsman beast. Ikenoji said it was just amazing. He didn't even know that such a profession existed. Haru said that a swordsman beast is a higher rank of swordsman. However, it is only available to beastmen. But because only the gods who dwell in sacred places can change their profession, they cannot switch to this class themselves. And there are only a few gods and beasts that exist in this world. Ikenoji said he understood. After that, he changed her profession from swordsman to swordsman beastman. He was surprised and thought it was easy. Now her HP was 69 out of 69. MP was 29 out of 29. The physical attack was 52, and the magic attack was 0. Yes, her physical defense was 40, as well as her magical defense was also 40. Her speed was 110 and her luck was 20. Ikenoji thought it looked like the skill of changing professions could be applied to his companions. He asked her if she wanted to become a beastman swordsman. Haru said yes. There are many advantages to this, however. Ikenoji smiled at her, and I told her to promise not to scream too loudly. Let her reveal her status. Haru said it was fine. She did so and was very surprised. She asked that how is this possible? Ikenoji said that this is one of his abilities, although even for him it is a bit strange. Haru said that, however, a change of profession can only be carried out by the gods and only in certain places. However, to spend it in such a place in such a short time, she had never heard of an ability that could change a profession. Ikenoji said it was understandable, so they'd better not talk about it, right? Haru said yes, or this ability can be used for crimes. Ikenoji said that with the help of his abilities, criminals can become normal again and again. He has a lot of things he can't tell her yet. They would talk about it later in the maze. Haru just looked at him questioningly. After that, they went to the maze where they had already fought with the werewolves. After a while, when they defeated all their opponents, the system informed Ikenoji that his level had been raised. He said it was good. He did not expect that the sword that was taken from the bandit would be useful. He turned to Haru and said that he had to go. Haru didn't react immediately, so he called out to her. The girl excused herself and followed him. Ikenoji said that they need to go to the next area already. They got there quickly and he said they had goblins here. He'll deal with them himself. Haru told him to be careful. Inoji jumped down and thought that because of Haru's party leader rank and the skill that increases the experience gained, the experience for killing monsters would go to her too. How can she raise the level and be safe? He used his skill and in the blink of an eye, he finished off all the goblins. The system immediately informed him that his level had been raised. Possession of the hammer has been unlocked. Haru jumped down too and came up to him. Ikenoji smiled and said that his level was rising as planned. And what about her? Just a little more and he will change his profession to a fighter. Haru revealed her status and was very surprised by something. Ikenoji told her that she had been acting strangely all this time. Is she really ill? He put his hand on her forehead to check if she had a fever. Haru immediately blushed and said that she was fine, she was just worried about two problems. Ikenoji asked that there are two problems, right? Haru said that the power of his slash is simply unique. Did he have a special training session yesterday? Ikenoji even choked and asked her what the two problem was. Haru said that her beastman swordsman had risen to level 12. Ikenoji was happy about this and said that he congratulated her because it was wonderful. Haruk thanked him, and she said that, however, that's not what she meant. Beastman swordsman is a high-class profession and it is very difficult to level up normally. However, she raised it in just killing four monsters. She's raising the level too fast. Ikenoji said that now was probably the time to tell her everything. But she has to promise that she won't tell anyone about this. Haru said she swears by her life. Ikenoji asked if her life was more important than that. Has she ever heard of a divine blessing? Haru said that she had heard about it, that there were times when people came here from other worlds, and the wanderers received special powers from the gods and goddesses. These powers are called divine blessings, so that means he's a wanderer, right? Ikenoji said yes. He came from a world called Japan, however, so far she can consider him one of the wanderers. He asked her that he scared her, didn't he? Haru smiled at him, and she said that there was no way. She is very glad that he trusts her enough to tell her his secret. Ikenoji thanked her and said that he had one more blessing. Haru was very surprised by this and asked if there really were two of them. 
Ikenoji said that, however, he realized that the blessing that requires 120th experience to level up does not work on her, which is why he thinks it only works on people who have blessings. He earned 20 times more experience after killing the monster, and then another blessing begins to take effect. Horus said that even if he says that, she can't believe that he. Twelve years ago, one hero managed to defeat the demon lord, and her master also came from Japan, as did Dejiro. Dejiro is such an incredible person. 200 years ago, there was a long war of the demonic race under the patronage of the demon lord, Lamite feminist, and the human race led by the Rakan Church, the world's largest land-grabbing religion. Twelve years ago, four heroes defeated the demon king and sent him to the next world. And one of these heroes was called Dejiro, and he was a monk. Ikenoji mentally thanked this Dejiro and thought that it turns out he is a real celebrity. At that moment, Haru noticed something and called out to him. Ikenoji saw the monster and told her not to worry, because he already knows. He was completely confident that he was going to be defeated now and used his skill called Slash. However, this slime easily passed his attack. Ikenoji said it was too much, it was too soft. It's even stronger than goblins. Physical attacks do almost no damage. Haru told him that it can even corrode metal, so it's better not to touch it. But his movements are very slow, so keeping your distance and using Slash is the best option. Ikenoji turned to this monster and said that he was like a slime that he had trampled to death, so his place was much lower than his. He used his skill called Slash over and over again. As a result, he defeated this monster, and the system informed him that he had raised his level. The mage's apprentice skill is unlocked, fire. Ikenoji said that magic. He was incredibly happy about it. Harold looked at him questioningly, and Chino said nothing. He himself thought that it was beyond his expectations for such a strange world like this. The system also informed him that it is possible to buy a fireball of level 11, the cost of which is 3 MP. Ikenoji was delighted and said he should just shout the name, right. He turned to Haru, who told her to step back a little. After that, he applied this new skill of his. It all worked, which he was very happy about, and the system informed him again that he had raised the level. Ikenoji was a little surprised and thought that's how it was. Using magic increases the level of the magician's profession. He was approached by Haru, who asked what kind of magic it was. She was just amazing. Ikenoji asked if she really thought that. He just thought it would be more effective against slime. Haru said that's right, with such magical power, the slime won't even know what hit it. Was he really a swordsman mage? Ikenoji said no, he thinks not. Haru said that he just used the skills of a swordsman and a magician and that's why she thought he was a swordsman magician. Ikenoji said that there was probably something similar. He himself thought that he couldn't tell her that he was unemployed now. He asked the girl, by the way, is it legal to use magic in the arena? Haru said no, it's not forbidden, but the audience is making up all sorts of rumors about his magic. Ikenoji understood her and said that he understood. So you can't use magic, otherwise the problem won't turn around, he'll do it later. Are there any wizards in this city? Haru said they weren't there. As she had heard, it takes a lot of money to become a successful magician. Obviously, using it provides a rapid level increase, however, MP recovery potions are very expensive. This is not good news for them. Ikenoji asked, what about the alchemists who make such potions? Haru said that in order to make potions and medicine, a person must be a chemist. In fact, only a few high-level chemists can create such potions. A chemist can create potions from plants, seeds, or animal parts. An alchemist can create alloys from minerals and metals. Ikenoji had a level 15 farmer and a level 10 collector unlocked. He also had a level 10 mage apprentice and had a level 20 alchemist apprentice unlocked. Ikenoji listened to her carefully and said that he could do that too. The profession seems to be very useful. Then he stopped, because he saw something ahead and said that he thought there was slime. Haru said that it was true that she could smell it too. Ikenoji was delighted and said that she had chosen the right moment, because it was time for practice. They came forward and saw the shiny slime, which shimmered like real gold. Ikenoji, without thinking twice, just shouted the word fireball. At that moment, Haru shouted something at him, but it was too late since he had already destroyed her. The system informed him that he had raised his level and received the title Hunter skill, which increases luck. Ikenoji looked at Haru questioningly. Haru picked up the medal and said it was a very rare medal. Ikenoji asked, what is a rare medal? After that, he found out that this is an item that falls out of rare monsters. Mages feed them to their magical beasts in order to raise their level. Ikenoji asked what to feed his magical animals, right? Haru said he wouldn't find one for less than three gold. He understands what she's talking about, right? Since it is very rare, it will cost quite a lot. 
Ikenoji wondered if it was worth the same as his vest. He said that then it turns out that they were very lucky. Haru smiled and said that was right. And then Ikenoji suggested that she find one more of the same. So after that, they went in search of the same slime in order to destroy it. But in the end, Ikenoji was disappointed, as they did not find anyone worthwhile. He asked why there were so few monsters in this maze. Haru said it was a beginner's maze. Monsters don't have a specific point of appearance here, so they stop worrying people and go straight to the boss, and that's why you should be more careful and move on. Ikenoji cheered up again and said that it was right. On the way, they met several other people who were also here. After a while, they came to the stairs that led down. Ikenoji suggested that she go to the boss. He asked her that the same staircase leads to him, didn't he? Haru said yes, but those two may have already killed the boss. Sometimes you have to wait for the boss to come back. It's like rebooting the boss. They decided not to stop and came to the boss's room. Ikenoji said that the door is closed, which means that. Haru suggested that he wait a bit before opening it. He asked her what kind of boss was there. Haru said that the Goblin King, even when it is cut into pieces, it is still reborn. Can she lure him out herself? Ikenoji asked, is it really serious? Then if something goes wrong, he's counting on her. Haru said that they should give it to her. Ikenoji patted her on the head and said that she was so reliable. But then they heard a crash. But the door still hasn't opened. Ikenoji suggested using the time given to them and eating. Haru happily supported him. Ikenoji asked if she was against dried meat, bread and water. Haru asked if it was really okay for her to eat the same food as him. Ikenoji said that everything was fine. She can eat the same as him. Haru thanked him. Ikenoji said that it would not be difficult to actually have fresh food with this bag, but he just wanted to try dried meat, for example. Haru asked that the dried meat is very tasty, right? Ikenoji asked her if she liked it, right? Haru tasted this dried meat and said that it was amazing that the meat that Magnet cooked was just as delicious. However, she still loves such tough meat very much. He himself was not very enthusiastic about this food and thought that, however, it was too hard for him. There's also that smell of alcohol. The smell is too strong, and there is too much salt. However, Haru, as he sees it, really liked it. He asked her if she would like to take his share too. Haru blushed and said she couldn't. If she did it, then it would be kind of. Ikenoji looked at her and saw that her tail was wagging. He was also embarrassed and said that then he would take it for himself. It's ridiculously difficult, so she should think about it and take it for him. Haru blushed again and said that if it was for him, then she would do her best. Ikenoji thought that even her mood had changed. He told her she was so sweet. Haru was embarrassed and thanked him. Ikenoji noticed her ears moving, and he said that, by the way, does the White Wolf Clan hate when their hair or tail is touched? Haru said that only his acknowledged master can touch the White Wolf, and no one else can touch his hair, tail or stomach. Ikenoji said it was right. May she forgive him for asking such strange questions. Haru said that was why he could touch her. Ikenoji was confused and thought that had she just blushed. He asked her again that he could touch her, right? Hera was a little worried, but she said yes, he can do as he pleases. He touched her tail, and she shuddered. Ikenoji felt guilty and said he was very sorry. Haru said there was nothing. It's just that it's the first time she's been touched by someone other than her parents. Ikenoji was greatly embarrassed by this, and he thought that he couldn't look into her eyes. He said the ears would be next. Haru was so pleased by his touch that she couldn't even stand on her feet and stumbled. Ikenoji picked her up and asked if she was okay. Haru apologized to him and told her that she suddenly felt so weak. Let him continue. The girl clung to him. Ikenoji couldn't continue because of his great embarrassment, so he gently pushed her away from him and thanked her. Haru said that if everything is fine, then her stomach. It's going to be amazing. Ikenoji asked what the stomach was, right? Haru said that if the white wolf lets someone touch his stomach, it means that he trusts him very much. If someone approaches, she will immediately smell him. Ikenoji said that his presence detection would work too, however. Is this really normal? Haru said that yes, she really wants the master to touch him. After that, she lay on his lap with her stomach up. Ikenoji slowly reached out his hand and touched her stomach. Haru asked him to be a little taller. Ikenoji looked at her breasts and asked if she was sure, but she didn't answer him because she was already asleep. He looked at her carefully and wondered if she was drunk. There was alcohol in the dried meat, wasn't there? After that, he laid her down carefully and carefully spread out the towel. He wondered what kind of beautiful sleeping face it was. After a while, the girl jumped up abruptly because of the sound. She saw her master in front of her. He asked her that she was already awake, right? 
Haru said that she was very sorry, it seemed that she had lost consciousness. Ikenoji said that's how it is, however, she's better now, right? Haru said yes. He told her that the current situation, even if they attack from here, any damage will be blocked by an invisible wall. Amba's arrows from bandits were no exception either. Haru asked that the gate to the boss's room had already opened, right? An attack from outside is impossible. Ikenoji was a little surprised and thought that she came to her senses very quickly, and she doesn't seem to remember anything about what happened. Haru said that the fight wouldn't start until they went inside. After they enter, the door will close until they either win or die. That's how it works. Ikenoji asked, then what are they waiting for? They have to kill the boss of the beginner maze. They entered the room and in the blink of an eye, the two of them destroyed the goblin. The system informed him that his level had been raised. The slash swordsman's skill is level 2. The woodcutter's skill. The lumberjack's skill level is level 2. A magician's apprentice. The water magic has been unlocked. Professions such as alchemist's apprentice and fighter have been unlocked. Ikenoji studied all this and thought that yes, the unemployment rate is really difficult to raise even after defeating the boss. Haru happily reported to him that her swordsman beasts had reached level 3. Without his help, she spent a lot more time to achieve something like this. Ikenoji said they were just lucky. He himself thought that this would not have happened if it were not for those blessings of the goddesses. Then Haru told him that it was a sword. Ikenoji picked it up and thought it looked like an ordinary one just like his. Haru said what the goblin had looted. It's really rare. He's really very lucky. He can even make goblins obey him. They'll do whatever he says. Ikenoji said that this way he could give them orders now. However, they shouldn't be fighting goblins anytime soon. They will take only the rare, and it will satisfy them. Haru agreed with him and said exactly what. And now they have to go into the inner room and pray to the goddess so that he gets a reward for defeating the boss. After that, he followed her into the room. What he saw there shocked him. Haru said it was a statue of the goddess of maturity. Ikenoji recognized her and said no way, why is she? Well, come to think of it, all the people who came here met her. This goddess has given him a blessing that accelerates the growth of his experience by 20 times. And by the way, does she know a goddess who looks like a child? Haru said that there are two goddesses who look like children. Ikenoji said she was blonde and very shy. Haru immediately said that it was Torlulu. She is a positive goddess and symbolizes leisure. She is also the goddess of gambling. Ikenoji said that it was clear, now it makes sense. So now he just has to pray to this goddess, right? Haru said yes. As soon as he knelt in front of this goddess, he felt someone's presence. The goddess he met for the first time appeared in front of him. She told him that they hadn't seen each other for a long time. Ikenoji said that, yes, and he is very happy with the two life she gave him. The goddess told him that it was fine. It can continue. She had summoned only his consciousness here. Ikenoji asked that it would be about a double blessing, right? The goddess said no, let him stay. After all, it was her mistake. Torlul had a hard time too. He wanted to tell her something, but the girl interrupted him and said that his title was unemployed. It's a skill. Ikenoji said that the skill is unemployed. Really great. Thanks to her. The goddess said it was good that he liked it, but they didn't. The unemployed should not exist at all. Despite this, he can change people's professions without the help of goddesses and the ability to find out the level and profession of another person. This skill surpasses even a blessing in power. Ikenoji said it was some kind of cheating. The goddess said that, of course, the violators would be punished, and that's why he shouldn't tell anyone about it. Does he understand this? He asked her if he could trust people. It's just that he already said one. The goddess said it was up to him. There are people with whom he can share this secret but don't let him brag about it to everyone. Ikenoji said yes. He's putting his life on the line. The goddess said it looks like it's going to be a long time, so we need to eat. This time she trusts him, and now she will give him a reward for completing this stage. She thought so, what should she do this time? Ikenoji thought that he had been waiting for all this for so long. He thanked the goddess. The goddess took out a circle and told him to throw a dart. What he goes into, he gets. Ikenoji asked, what is a kitchen towel doing here? Ikenoji gained the ability to understand a common language. The goddess said that it seems that this skill allows you to read and write in other languages of this world. Ikenoji was delighted and said it was a pretty useful skill. The goddess said that usually the loss of this kind of skills would not be very successful, because he can just work a little and learn a particular language. After all, there are many mazes that he has to check out. The Torlulu maze is located in the city of Balazir. Let him check it out as soon as there is time. Ikenoji said he wanted to ask something. He asked her a question, and the goddess asked what his little sister was, right? Ikenoji said yes. He wonders if she's okay. 
the goddess said she would look good when they met again. Ikenoji was about to thank her, but at that moment the goddess disappeared. He panicked and said he hadn't thanked her properly. As soon as the goddess said goodbye to him, she seriously thought about his questions and said that, however, he should no longer have a younger sister. Ikenoji came to his senses again and saw Haru in front of him. Haru congratulated him. She said that if he doesn't have an item, it means that he got a skill right. She already thought it would end up in a dish towel, although they are even comfortable. Ikenoji said he got a skill called general language comprehension. Now he will have no problems with reading and writing. Haru was very happy for him and said that really, it seems that her work has become less, but she didn't mean that a master who can read and write is bad. She meant that now he wouldn't need her help. Ikenoji wasn't going to accuse her of anything, so he told her to calm down. He's a man from another world, so he doesn't know much about this world. Therefore, he will rely on her in many ways. Haru said she understood. She will do her best. Ikenoji asked if it was time for them to come back already. Haru supported him and said yes. And after that, this cleared maze received the title Labyrinth of Victory. Ikenoji, along with Haru, came back to Margaret. Ikenoji came to her and told her that they had already returned. Margaret put aside her business and said that she was welcome back. She can tell by the look of him that everything went well. Ikenoji said yes. Margaret said they would have dinner later, but in the meantime, let them change their clothes. Ikenoji said it would be nice if he had a little more clothes. He turned to Haru, who asked if she had a change of clothes. Haru took out her slave clothes. Ikenoji couldn't let her wear that, so he turned to Margaret and told her that he needed clothes for Haru and as soon as possible. Margarita came up to them and told him to leave it to her. She'll choose something. She turned to Haru and said that they needed to go there and she would take measurements there. Haru looked at her master with concern. He told her that everything was fine. He wants her to change into normal clothes. Haru said she should give it to her. Margaret said she knew his size. Ikenoji said that she had met him at the very beginning. Margaret winked and said she knew, because he had said it twice. After a while, Margaret came with Haru. Haru was dressed in different clothes that Margaret had given her. Ikenoji said that it suits her very well. Margaret said she put the other clothes there. Ikenoji thanked her. After that, it was necessary to set the table. Haru said she would help her. Margaret thanked her. While Marguerite and Haru were setting the table, Salu turned to Ikenoji and asked how long he was going to stay in this city. Ikenoji said that he thinks that soon he will go to a city called Bular. Solo said he could take a horse-drawn carriage. The next one will be in a week, but it is also possible to walk in three days. Ikenoji asked if there was anything they could go tomorrow, right? He turned to Haru and asked her what she thought about it. Haru said no, because she couldn't leave him one. Margaret said she knew she would say that. As they say, if you love your child, then you need to send them out into the world. They can come back here whenever they want. Salu said yes, let them come back someday. Margaret said it was okay if he read it to his mother. Ikenoji said that he only thinks of himself as a kind-hearted, courageous sister. Margali said that if it was true, then she would make a beta for them on the road. Ikenoji thanked her again. After a while, when they had all eaten, it was time to go to bed. Ikenoji was already getting ready for bed in his room. At that moment, there was a knock on his room, and it was Haru. Haru apologized for coming to him at night. Ikenoji asked what happened. Haru said that she was talking about what happened before they went into the boss's room. Ikenoji immediately understood what she was talking about so much that he was very embarrassed about it. Haru said that while he was rubbing her stomach, she lost consciousness. Ikenoji said it looked like she was drunk. She doesn't have to worry about it. And then Haru told him that she was asking him to continue this. She wanted him to do it right here. Ikenoji thought to continue, what, touching her, right? Haru said it was an oath of allegiance. Ikenoji immediately agreed and said that it was fine. And I asked her about her stomach, right? Haru said that white wolves can't get pregnant on a full moon, so there's no problem today. Ikenoji was absolutely terrified. He thought that was okay, too, right? Haru was also very confused and said it was her first time, so let him be gentle. The next morning they woke up together in one bed. Ikenoji woke up first. He stroked Haru's head and she woke up. He apologized for waking her up. Haru got up and wished him good morning. Ikenoji was still feeling very uncomfortable and thought something about how he did it. It's very embarrassing. After they got ready, they went downstairs, where Margaret and Sola were already waiting for them. Ikenoji noticed that Salu was acting strangely, and Margaret, too. Then Margaret came up to him and said in his ear that her house had very thin walls. Ikenoji was horrified. Haru was also very confused, as she heard everything. Ikenoji thought it was so embarrassing. Margaret turned to him and said that, by the way, 
he shouldn't have embarrassed the girl so much. Ikenoji said it was his mistake. Margaret said she thought she had no choice. She will help them in their relationship before they leave. Ikenoji said he thinks it would be better for Haru if he knew what was wrong. Haru told him that she felt good. Salu came up to Margaret and said that Ikai loves Haru, so she shouldn't do this. After a while, when they had all calmed down a little, Margaret asked them what was wrong. What were they going to do now? Ikenoji said that in any case, he needed to go to the maze, and then he would go to the guild, and after that he would sell some things in order to have money for the trip. Margaret said the adventurer's guild. He shouldn't do anything weird, okay. After all, Haru will be there. Ikenoji said it was good. Margaret smiled and said that it was great. Then she would bring the bento she had prepared for their departure. Meanwhile, Salu shared information about the crew with Haru. Ikenoji thanked Margaret for helping them, and when everything was discussed, they began to prepare for their departure. Ikenoji had already packed up and approached Haru, who asked if she was ready. Haru said that yes, she was ready to leave. Ikenoji told her that he was very grateful to her for everything that had happened. However, she had such a short skirt. Isn't she embarrassed that her underwear is visible? Haru just looked at him questioningly. Because of this, Ikenoji felt guilty and said that he didn't mean anything strange. Just because it's pretty weird, he's just saying that other adventurers might misunderstand it. Haru said it was great because she was actually wearing bloomers. Ikenoji said he didn't think there were bloomers in this world. Haru said she didn't mind if he took a look. There's even a special hole for the tail. Bloomers were lost, but they were soon found and became popular again. Ikenoji was embarrassed and thanked her for the views. Meanwhile, in Florence, the entrance to the intermediate maze. That's where they came, Ikenoji and Haru. There were a lot of people there, and he said there were so many people here. Haru said yes. This is because all non-novice adventurers go to the intermediate maze, although probably only 10% of people will be able to get to the boss room. Ikenoji said that the teleporter is all there. Haru said yes, but she had to get to the 22nd floor before she could use teleportation there. This is a teleporter that allows you to continue the passage from the place where it stops. Six people can be moved at a time. Then familiar voices called out to them. They said those newbies are here too. It was Jeff and Alice. Jeff asked that they were heading to the intermediate maze, right? Alice invited them to go with them. Ikenoji was not very happy to see them and asked who let these guys in here at all. Haru asked him if maybe they would listen to them. Ikenoji said yes, however, there is not much in the queue. Jeff started shouting at them to go ahead and take their seats. Alice shouted that it was a small group calling them, so it's okay. Ikenoji asked Haru if it was really true. Haru said that yes, this happens a lot. Ikenoldi thought that there was a very long queue here. Is this an attraction or something? He said that at least it was better than waiting here. After that, they approached Joff and Alice. Ikenoji asked them if they were mad at him. After all, he was the one who defeated their boss. Is this really normal? Jeff told him not to worry about it. They're friends, aren't they? They're very strong. Alice said that in the end it's better to forget all the small details when they're working with someone strong. Ikenoji said that, however, they are really not small. He asked them that where were they going. They planned to be around noon. Jeff said that they planned to teleport to the 95th floor and then go by Permian to the 100th. He got cooler, didn't he? Alice told him he was so beautiful. Ikenoji asked if they were really so weak that they went down to the 95th floor. Jeff said they weren't weak. He is a first-class warrior. Alice said that, and she's a first-class animal tamer, and together they are second graders. Ikenoji said he didn't want to talk to them anymore. Haru said they were most likely leeches. Ikenoji asked what leeches are, right? Haru said that when he goes with a group that was on the 95th floor and escapes from the battlefield, this floor will be considered a new teleport point. They're like parasites. Ikenoji said it made sense. He wants to get to the boss room quickly. Haru said that if it was just them, then everything would be fine. However, if they went with them, then it would be equivalent to applying for suicide. Jeff said that yes, it would be great if they went to places that match their level. Alice said that was true because they had to match their level. Ikenoji asked that yes, what is wrong with them? But then he said it was good. Then why not go somewhere where you can get experience? Then maybe they won't die right away. To which the two of them replied that no, they would not die right away. Alice said that because if they used their true power to kill a dying monster, they would still be killed. Ikenoji asked that they understand that after that they will be the target, right? What's wrong with them? Jeff said it was the same ring, they should check it out. Ikenoji took out his ring and asked what the ring was, right? Haru asked if it was really an engagement ring. Ikenoji said what a peaceful name, and I asked her if she could repeat it. Haru looked at him questioningly but still said it was an engagement ring. But perhaps she would explain everything to him now. 
If the group leaders wear these rings, they can become one group, but up to six people. These rings were made for Danjiro and they are very valuable. Ikenoji turned to Alice and Joff and asked that he thought they had stolen them, didn't they? They asked him what made him decide that. Jeff said they got them from Dejiro. That was about 12 years ago, right? They took him around the city, and he thanked them so much. Ikenoji thought he thought that even the likes of them were useful at some point. He said it was good that whatever was there, he was taking it for himself. Jeff said it sounded good. This is a very important thing, so don't let him lose it. Ikenoji said he knows. He turned to Haru and asked her to give him her palm. Haru said it was fine. Ikenoji blushed and said that the ring finger was beyond praise. He put this ring on her and told her that thank god the size could be adjusted using magic. Alice and Joff said that it was great, and now they have to go. Joff turned to him and asked that he wouldn't mind paying for it, would he? Ikenoji asked that you also have to pay for the teleport, or what? For a while, they were already in this maze on the 55th floor. Jeff said that fish lizards are starting to appear here on the 56th floor. Alice suggested checking it out. Ikenoji said they were strong. Jeff said that they don't cause any problems for the adventurer there. Not for them. Ikenoji said how lively they were. Jeff said that the guild is giving requests for their destruction. Alice happily said that singly they are just F-rank lizards, but when they gather in a group, they become D-rank. Ikenoji guessed and asked them that they had just forced them to help them with the quest, right? Jeff said they were planning to kill the boss, but then they remembered they could just come here. Ikenoji called them idiots and said they couldn't get rewarded without taking the quest. Haru told his master that as long as they were in the guild, she would buy items, and there were no penalties for failure. Ikenoji said it was understandable. Jeff said that, although it would be great if they didn't damage the scales and sold it, right? Ikenoji said he thinks it's not that bad. What kind of headache is it? He turned to Haru and asked her what, is something wrong? Haru said it was nothing like that. Just not seeing a single magical beast is very rare. Ikenoji asked if it was really true. Haru said that she thinks that such things happen to many who have descended below. Soon they reach the stairs that lead to the 56th floor. Ikenoji said it was good. Do they know how many monsters have appeared there in all this time? They shouldn't be so careless. Jeff said they would leave everything to them. They must not fail with their hunting. And at that moment they heard a cry for help. Ikenoji and Haru immediately ran towards the scream. There they saw a huge monster that grabbed a man. And after that, he just walked away and didn't even do anything to them. Ikenoji asked if he hadn't noticed them. Haru said that they were surrounded by small ones, but there were a lot of them. Jov and Alice were very scared. The guy asked the girl that it wasn't very good, right? Alice told him that there weren't that many of them. Haru told his master to use his fire magic. Lizards are quite vulnerable to fire and water. Ikenoji said that he was fine and immediately applied his small fire magic. Jeff and Alice shouted that they were going back to the 55th floor. After a while, when Ikenoji and Haru had completely sorted it out, they met again. Ikenoji said that thank god they didn't chase them after they went up to the floor. Jeff said his level has risen. Alice said it was hers too. Ikenoji said they were too carefree. Anyway, what kind of huge lizard was there? She ate that adventurer. He couldn't save him. Haru tried to calm him down and said that there was no other way out. She can assume that they are strong and have a high reproductive capacity, which is why this is probably due to the huge influx of monsters. Depending on the report submitted, the adventurer's guild may send in a rank adventurer to subdue. That's fine, of course, but if they keep showing up with the same amount. Ikenoji asked if he had really gone up the stairs. He immediately killed this monster. Haru said that if they continued to multiply, the magic of the floors would start to be absorbed and they would move on to the next floors. In this scenario, if they get to the 55th floor, they will be able to use the teleporter and get to the surface. Ikenoji turned to the two of them and asked if they had heard anything. Then let them go to the guild and report it. They will restrain them. Jov said he understood, let him leave it to them. Alice said let them put it down for them. After which, the two of them immediately ran away from there. Ikenoji told Haru to take off her ring. They will attack and retreat, holding them back on the 56th floor, and after that they will return to the 55th floor. He himself thought that in order for him to raise the level, he had to kill them with his bare hands. He told her that if they encounter a huge lizard, then she should immediately run away. Haru said she understood. Ikenoji said that their task is to raise the level and reduce their number. It's time to grow up. Ikenoji and Haru joined the battle with the monsters. After defeating these monsters, Ikenoji looked back and noticed another monster in the distance. He turned to Haru and said that he needed to move away. Haru said she understood him. After that, he went to the 55th floor with Haru. 
Ikenoji said about the monster that with its size it would be difficult to climb the stairs. And at that moment, the system informed him that he had raised his level. Ikenoji stopped and opened the status window. The system also told him that the unemployed person's skill called Job Release Level 4 had been upgraded to a skill called Job Release Level 5. The unemployed person's skill called Profession Verification has been upgraded to Level 2. The Swordsman's Circular Slash skill has been upgraded to a skill called Circular Slash 2. A fighter's skill called HP Strengthening, Small, has been obtained. The Magician's Profession has been unlocked. A level 15 commoner is automatically installed. Ikenoji was currently unemployed at level 60, a swordsman at level 17, an apprentice magician at level 20, and a fighter at level 17. Ikenoji was very happy about this. He thought, how many lizards have they defeated? Only 80, right. Apart from Haru's experience, it would be equivalent to 2,400 lizards killed. It's just amazing. He said he couldn't stop smiling. He looked at Haru, who was also happy just because he was happy, and said that at this rate. He approached her and asked if she had raised her level 100. Haru said yes. The swordsman beast had reached level 6, and she had gained a new skill called Enhanced Sense of Smell. As expected, the rise in the status of the swordsman beast is simply amazing. She is already confident that she can do the same as that swordsman. Now her speed is the same as his or even higher, so she will definitely be able to repel all the attacks of these bandits. Ikenoji looked at the rainbow-colored and animated Haru and thought that her tail was moving so proudly. He asked her if she could still fight. Haru said that yes, she was fine. Ikenoji said they can kill one big one now. Now the two of them were in front of the stairs that lead to the 56th floor. Ikenoji looked at the monsters and said they were going to pile up. Then how about they hit first? After that, he jumped up and used his slash. He looked at the monsters that were already gathering under him and thought that right here, perfect. And then Ikenoji used a skill called Small Fire. Haru asked him what kind of magic it was. She's just amazing. Ikenoji said it was just a small fire. It's just that his strength was influenced by some factors. They'd better focus on the enemies in front of them. Haru said it was fine. Ishinoji came up with a plan and told Haru that when he jumped, she should jump too. Zara looked at him in surprise and questioningly. Ikenoji told her to jump for sure. Haru said it was fine. After that, he jumped up, Haru did the same, and applied a circular slash. This skill of his killed all the monsters that are now surrounded by Ikenoji and Haru in one go. Haru was very impressed after seeing this attack. She said that so many and in just one hit. Ikenoji looked at the deleted Haru and thought that what he had done earlier was just change jobs for a moment. When Ikenoji uses magic, he changes his profession to one that specializes in magic. These are professions such as unemployed, swordsman, magician's apprentice, magician, alchemist. And when he uses a sword, he changes his profession to those that improve his swordsmanship. Such professions include unemployed, swordsman, swordsman's apprentice, fighter, hunter. This is the best use of an unemployed person's skill. Ikenoji used Slash again and killed another monster. But then another monster appeared right in front of them, which was much bigger and stronger than all the previous ones. Ikenoji stepped forward to block Haru. Haru turned to him. Ikenoji said that everything was fine. After that, he attacked him and cut off half of his tail. The monster growled loudly from the intense pain. Ikenoji thought, what's with that huge mouth? He himself asked this monster that did he really want to eat like that? Ikenoji concentrated and changed his profession again. After that, he turned to the monster and said that then he would now feed him something delicious. He used his skill called Small Fire again and then there was a huge explosion. The monster did not survive, Ikenoji defeated it. Ikenoji smiled and said that such power had long gone beyond the limits of Small Fire. Haru said it was a great job, which is to be expected. Ikenoji laughed and asked if she was hurt. He also noticed something and said that after defeating the big lizard, the smaller ones just ran away. At that moment, the system said that his level had been raised. The system also informed Ikenoji that the commoner's skill called Stone Throw had been upgraded to a skill called Throw. A mage apprentice skill called Lightning Magic has been obtained. A magician's skill called Magic Enhancement has been obtained. An alchemy apprentice skill called Alchemy has been obtained. Twenty alchemical recipes have also been obtained. A hunter's skill called Impact Correction, Small, has been obtained. The merchant's skill called Mineral Identification has been upgraded to a skill called Food and Mineral Identification. Ikenoji did not expect that he would get so much by raising his level. He said it felt like his head was going to explode. He opened the status window again and saw that he had obtained the titular skill called Mania. 
as well as the titular sorting skill. Ikenoji asked what the sorting skill is, right? The system replied to him that with this skill, other skills that are not titular will be sorted and moved to another screen. Other people can't see this screen. Haru asked him that he got a good skill, didn't she? Ikenoji said yes, but what about her? He himself thought that it looked like he had received something very useful, but he had also received similar skills, so it would be bad if someone saw it. At that moment, a familiar voice was already heard asking if they were okay. It was Jov and Alice. Ikenoji said they were too late. They don't need any help now. Jov said that he should forgive them, because they just got lost. Alice asked if they could take them to the teleporter. And after that, they began to collect magic stones together, which were left over from the destroyed monsters. Jov said they were so amazing anyway. It's not bad. Alice said that there are only magic stones and scales here. Ikenoji asked them that shouldn't they have sent a quest to subdue the lizards. However, it's still just them here. He only saw one adventurer, but he was eaten. Jeff said it was because he had disrupted all requests, so that others can't take it. Alice said she had researched what to expect from him. He's a genius. Jeff said that as long as they had something to sell, everything would be fine. Alice said it was so amazing. Haru told them that if they took everything without permission, then there would be a fine for such a thing. Jeff asked if it was really serious. Ikenoji rolled his eyes and thought what an idiot he was. After some time in the Adventurer's Guild. After that maze, Ikenoji and Haru returned to the guild. Ikenoji said that he would like to sell magic stones and materials. The girl behind the counter said that it was understandable, then let him give proof that he was an adventurer. Ikenoji gave the girl the required document. Haru told him that it would be nice if they sold everything at a high price. Ikenoji smiled and said yes. Then the guy Ikenoji was supposed to fight came up behind them. He asked them that they had gone to the beginner mazes as usual. Hadn't they? They can't earn that much, he's right, right. And for such a woman to have such a poor master. Haru looked at this guy very angrily. Ikenoji stroked her head and asked if that was all he wanted to say. He turned to Haru and told her not to get angry. They've been getting along better since yesterday. Ikenoji smiled and told this guy that his hands were tied. All he could do was provoke, which was to expect such a noble person. The guy got angry at these words and asked what he was going to fight with him. He agreed, didn't he? Ikenoji grinned and suggested that he go to the arena right now. After that, they all followed into the arena together. A man is here of his own free will, so if he dies, it will be considered an accident. They all walked together to the punishment room, behind the arena. Jeff told Ikenoji that this was a punishment room. Alice said that it could be considered their second home. Ikenoji told them that he begged them not to interrupt him, because some preparations had to be made before the fight. The man laughed out loud when he heard this from Ikenoji. He said that who would have thought that he would offer it? He thought that he would immediately run away as soon as he recognized his class. He will receive a reward from Master Orguru for it. Then the girl who was supposed to give them the reward came up and asked for forgiveness for making them wait. She said that the total amount was 32 sounds. Ikenoji thanked her. The guy also turned to her and told her to make sure that she had prepared the arena for this brat to fight with him, after all. The girl shuddered at his smile and told him to wait a minute. She was about to say something to Ikenoji, but the man interrupted her and said that everything was fine. He's going to show him how he's going to fight for his life. He's just going to teach him, so don't let her worry, because he's not going to die. Although if it's an accident, then everything will be fine. The girl did not lose hope, and still wanted to tell him something and said that despite this. But this guy interrupted her again and hit the table with his fist, after which he said that there should be no problems while he was applying. Ikenoji turned to this girl and told her that everything was fine, let her just do it for him, and may she forgive him for bothering her. The girl sighed heavily and said that it was good. Then they will continue. She will take care of the final cost of the arena. Those who were in the guild now started up, as they heard something about a fight in the arena. It was very interesting for everyone to see it. After a while, everything was ready. Ikenoji and this guy were already in the arena itself and preparing for their duel and everyone who wanted to watch it has already come and taken their places. The receptionist told them that the duel would be stopped if the winner was not determined within 10 minutes. The guy was smiling very contentedly, as he had already decided for himself that he had won. He told his opponent that he would start when he was ready. This is mercy from someone who is stronger. Ikenoji just thanked him. But then he noticed three men behind this guy, who, apparently, were his comrades. He asked him what he was up to. Isn't this a one-on-one -on -one fight? Apparently, this guy wasn't going to fight him honestly from the very beginning. So he resorted to dirty tricks. And at the same time he wasn't even going to hide it. The guy told him not to worry, because it was in case he wanted to escape. 
the Kanoji said he could see. It's clear. He himself thought that their hidden faces only aroused even more suspicion. He took out his coin and said it was rent. The guy told him not to worry about it, because he would return it. The man jumped up joyfully and said that he had caught a coin. Ikenoji decided to take advantage of the fact that this guy was distracted and landed his punch right in his stomach. The guy writhed in pain, then fell to his knees. He asked him if he was a fighter. Ikenoji said he looks like he can still talk. In the end, it would be too easy. The man laughed and said that he was right and took out insurance for a reason. The fighters are strong, but they are weak to magic. After that, he gave an order to those friends of his. These friends of his used their magic called small fire. Ikenoji just stood in his place and did nothing. And then this little fire hit him right there. Hark was very nervous, she was very scared. The man was already glad that he had won, so he laughed and said that he had received. But then this fog lifted, and everyone saw that Ikenoji was fine. There wasn't a scratch on it. The man could not have expected this in any way, so he was in great shock and asked why it did not work. Haru, on the contrary, was very happy to see that her master was unharmed. Ikenoji was just waiting for his exit, so after that he said that now he should be allowed to show his magic. Ikenoji chuckled and asked what he would pay, right, and let him see what real magic looks like. This guy's buddies tried to attack him with their magic again. They used magic called small stone, small wind and small water, but Ikenoji easily reflected all this. It was no hindrance to him, and after that, he used his magic called small fire and showed them all what it should really look like. Everyone was horrified when they saw what he was capable of, because no one expected this from him. Ikenoji didn't attack this guy with his magic, so he just dispelled it. The man was just terrified, despite the fact that he did not receive severe injuries. From a strong shock, he fell to the ground and asked him what he was. The guy did not expect that everything would turn out that way, because he expected to lower Ikenoji in front of everyone so that he would no longer arise and get in the way. But everything turned out exactly the opposite. Ikenoji felt quite confident now, unlike this guy, and said that this was not a profession that he could name. He himself thought that because, in fact, it is so. How unfortunate. He turned to this guy again and said that he should tell his noble aristocrat that this was why he would run and hide. However, Haru, if he ever offends his friends, then he won't hold back, even if he's a noble. In other words, he uses him to the maximum in order for him to deliver his message. The man, despite his intense fear, still tried to deceive him. But Ikenoji noticed all this, and then he used his slash. He cut off this guy's leg. The man fell to the ground in pain and began to scream that his leg. The receptionist's girlfriend ran up to them and said that was enough. The man was rushing around and could not freeze in place, which greatly interfered with the girl. She couldn't give him one help. The girl told him to stop, because she was trying to help him. Meanwhile, Haru turned to her master. Ikenoji hugged her. The girl told him that he should not load himself like that. She's very worried about him. Ikenoji said he wasn't loading himself up. The girl said she was begging him. And while the two of them were talking, those three guys came up to their friend and also tried to help him. One of them said that he would give him a helping hand. Another handed him alcohol and told him to drink it in order to ease the pain. Ikenoji thought he planned to end it all on a more positive note, however, in the end trying to make everything perfect, he was exhausted. Because they used magic. The rumors began to spread very quickly. And besides, the adventurers who tried to provoke them have significantly decreased. Now everyone was afraid of them and did not dare to cross their path once again. But despite this, Ikenoji did not really like it. On the contrary, he did not want to attract too much attention to himself. Jeff was still very impressed by Ikenoji's strength and skills and said he didn't think that guy was that strong. Alice was also delighted with Ikenoji and said that he was simply amazing. Jeff said the world is really huge. Alice agreed with him and said that he was really big. Jeff turned to the girl. Alice asked him what was wrong. Jeff took her hand and told her they had to do it. Alice supported him and said that they would hurry up and do great things. Meanwhile, Ikenoji and Haru left the arena, taking advantage of the moment when they were not so closely watched. Now they went out into the city and just strolled through the streets. Despite his obvious victory, Ikenoji was not at all happy about it. He looked sad and puzzled. Ikenoji said that at this rate they would have to leave this city, because if someone sees them leaving Margaret's house, they will want to harm her. So he suggested that Haru just keep his head down and wait for the crew to arrive. Haru always supported him and this time was no exception, so she told him yes. She understood him, and then the two of them went to buy seats in a wagon, which just sends them to the city they need. Ikenoji said they needed to go to Balajara. For two people, he immediately paid for their passage after that. He and Haru left, because the people had not gathered yet, so the cart was not leaving right now. 
They walked away from the wagon and then Ikenoji asked Haru that he would not rock her. Haru immediately told him that no, everything should be fine. She's even a little curious. Ikenoji, he said it was understandable. He understood, but will everything be okay with him? Because this is his first trip. Apparently, he was a little worried about this trip. And then they heard the familiar voices again. Jeff and Alice have already found them. He immediately ran up to them and began to share information, as if they had not seen each other for a very long time. Jeff, as always, began to talk loudly and animatedly. He said that they killed a lot of monsters, and they were also bought at a high price. Alice smiled, because this was nothing new for them and said that even if you count their fine, they made a considerable profit. Joff said that, however, they had already used it all. Ikenoji said it was great, but then the meaning of his words came to him, and he asked if they had already used everything. Jeff said yes, they bought this guy with all the money they had. They're going to saddle him up and go on an adventure, on this magnificent horse. Ikenoji looked at their so-called horse and thought that a horse, right. But isn't it a donkey? He told them that it was great, of course, that they were happy. Jeff said that if they meet again, they will definitely have fun. Alice said yes, this is another reason to meet. Ikenoji sighed and told them to take care of themselves then. Jeff tried to take the donkey away from here and told him that he had to go already. Alice said he was a little naughty, didn't he? After that, they finally left here. Ikenoji said that their company is a bit strange, right? Haru agreed with him and said yes. Then the man from whom they bought seats in the cart told them to take their seats already. Sola and Margaret came to see them off. They ran in order to see them off. Margaret said they ate in time. Salu said it was because she was very slow. Margaret asked if she wanted to say goodbye to her. Salu said she felt like she hadn't gotten rid of those thoughts yet. Margaret hugged her and told her to stop joking already. Salu told her to just give it to them already. Margaret said yes. She handed Ikenoji food for the journey and said that here were sandwiches for him. And here is the water. Ikenoji was very grateful to them for this, so he thanked them. Margaret smiled and said they were always welcome. It was announced that they were already leaving. Ikenoji told them goodbye that one day they would return here and she would make them food again, and he would also bring them souvenirs. Haru said that she swears by the name of the White Wolf tribe, she will never forget her kindness and care. Margaret told them to take good care of their health and they could come back to them at any time. Salu shouted at them to meet again, let them promise it. And after that, Ikenoji and Haru finally went to Balasara. Ikenoji drew attention to the sign that he saw that time when he first came to this city, when he couldn't read it, but this time he did it. He read that it said that the city is a maze in it. They can always meet new friends and companions. Welcome to Florence. Ikenoji was delighted and said that he was able to read it. Haru smiled and said she was glad. And some time has passed since they left for another city. Now the cart stopped to take a short rest. Ikenoji thought that eating jerky for breakfast was not that easy. It's not that bad, but... He looked at Haru, who had already eaten my portion, and asked her that he had already eaten enough, so would she like it. Haru was very happy, but then said no. He had already fed her enough. She apologized and said what if her stare bothered him. There are bugs everywhere, she was looking for them, so that they would not spoil his food. Ikenoji sighed and said that he was just pissing already, so he wanted her not to starve either. What a pity. He just doesn't really like jerky because it's too tough for him. Looks like I'll have to throw everything away. He looked at Haru, who was looking at him with big eyes. Ikenoji smiled and handed her his portion of the jerky. Haru blushed and said that wasn't what he was thinking. But then he used his throwing skill and threw this dried meat right into her mouth. He apologized to her and said that he just wanted to try out a new skill. Let her take the jerky as an apology. Haru was very happy and thanked him. Ikenoji said everything was fine. It's okay. He himself thought that he wished that the passengers wouldn't object either. Everyone looked at him with hatred. The question was clear in their eyes. Why the hell was he flirting with her? Ikenoji was trying to distract himself and thought it was quite convenient to be able to check his status in his head. He had classes such as level 62 unemployed, level 18 fighter, swordsman level 18, level 19 squire, hunter level 25. His HP was 413 out of 413. His MP was 72 out of 72. His attack was 469. His defense was 410, his magic attack was 88, and his magic defense was 101. 
His speed was 479. Luck was 66. His equipment was fabric armor, leather boots, an iron breastplate, and an iron sword. He had skills such as sword wielder level 2 slash level 2. Spiral oscillation level 2. Improving fencing. He also had titles that included rare hunter, dungeon conqueror, skill maniac, sorting skills, switchable professions, level 31 commoner, farmer level 1, hunter level 25, forester level 14, level 28 squire, magician's apprentice level 26, level 6 merchant, level 1 spearman apprentice, level 19 swordsman, archer level 1, lumberjack level 1, Master Molotov Level 1 Alchemist's Apprentice Level 6 Mage Level 9 Fighter Level 18 Level 1 Playboy He also had Divine Blessings, multiplying the experience gained by 20 times required 120 of the experience to increase the level. Ikenoji thought that there were so many of them for him now that he had plenty to choose from. And yet the assessment is very convenient. It shows the profession and the requirements for obtaining it. He decided to review his profession, which is called Playboy. The system provided him with a transcript that said being a commoner without a profession leads to this class. Playboy learns some really weird skills. In order to earn experience, he must cross your body with the opposite sex. Ikenoji thought that crossing into the village with the opposite sex meant having sex, right? He was very embarrassed by this and thought, what kind of demand is this? He turned to Haru and asked her to give him her hand. Haru immediately extended her hand to him. Ikenoji thought it was very cute. But nothing happens. Haru also blushed and whispered to him that they were still in the carriage, so it was too early for that. Ikenoji thought that he was just touching her, so something more was needed. He held her hand tighter and thought that it looked like nothing was still happening. So this is not what is needed. What a wonderful class. However, what kind of skills will he gain? He is curious because he is a guy after all. This is very interesting. Okay, then he'll just keep checking. He still held Haru's hand and thought that the gods were allowing him to live in this world. However, he has a goal and that is to meet Dejiro. He must thank him for everything he did for him. After that, he wants to raise the unemployment rate as much as possible. This is also his goal. For now, he would enjoy this leisurely journey with Haru. Then Haru turned to him. Ikenoji came to his senses and said that her hand. Haru was very embarrassed and said that if this is what he wants, then he doesn't have to let her go. Ikenoji smiled and said that her hand was so soft. But then he was horrified because he looked at everyone present in this carriage and thought that the cart was filled with a murderous aura that only men could feel. He stood up and said it was true. I wonder how much longer is left to the city. At that moment, Haru jumped up as if she saw something. Ikenoji, on the contrary, sat back in his seat and said that yes, he understands. Haru looked outside and said that maybe it was too late. Ikenoji said it's never too late. Haru said that this cart somehow doesn't smell like adventure. She looked at her master and said that no, even he couldn't do it. She doesn't believe that the dead can be returned to their world. After which both looked questioningly at each other. Ikenoji said that it looked like someone was attacked by monsters. Haru said that she could smell human blood and the smell of monsters. Ikenoji asked her if they were controlled by someone. Haru asked that didn't he say the same thing before? What should they do? Ikenoji smiled before standing up and saying okay, they need to go. Haru supported him and said yes. After which they got out of the cart and said goodbye to the man who had carried them all this way. They told him that this was their stop and thanked him very much. The man told them to take care of themselves. And after that, the two of them rushed into the forest. Haru ran ahead of him and said that the smell of blood was getting stronger. Ikenoji looked at her bare legs. He was very embarrassed and said that a little more. Haru said yes, just a little more. At that moment her skirt rode up and he said what he saw. Haru thought he meant something completely different, so she said yes. 
she sees too. Ikenoji thought that showing them to him like that was not very good. Although it's not her fault, he needs to get his act together. He turned to her and asked what was wrong, what she saw there. After which he himself raised his eyes and saw how a huge monster fought with a man and the man was clearly losing to him. Ikenoji immediately grabbed his sword because he wanted to rush to the aid of this man. But Haru stopped him and said that there was no need to rush because it was dangerous. And then more monsters appeared and began to surround them. Ikenoji asked why they were all gathered here, although they still need to deal with them. He turned to Haru and told her to take care of the wolves. Haru said okay. Ikenoji said that he takes care of the bears. After that, the two of them rushed into battle. Ikenoji had already defeated a small group of these bears, so he rushed after the next ones, but they began to strangely gather in one group and seemed to not pay any attention to him at all. This interested Ikenoji very much. He stopped to watch them and thought, what is wrong with them? They suddenly began to ignore him and dig into the ground. Is there really something there? Yes, and they are trying to get to him. However, this does not matter at all because the person directly in front of him does not have the luxury of turning away in front of him. He jumped right into the center of these bears and killed one immediately. The others got angry and attacked him. Ikenoji changed his profession and attacked them with his magic. He was distracted and did not notice how a bear wanted to attack him from behind, but then Haru came to his aid and cut off the bear's head. She apologized to him for her inept actions. She decided to act when I thought he might get hurt. Ikenoji said no, because she saved him. At this point, the system informed him that his level had been raised. The mage's skill called Water Magic has been upgraded to level 2 Water Magic. A fencing skill called Dual Wielding was also acquired. After that, they discovered several more bodies of people. Haru was very upset and said that in the end they didn't save anyone. Ikenoji said no, because they could still save at least one person. Haru was surprised and said that singing. Ikenoji said that the monsters here ignored him and tried to dig something up here. It's like a buried box. He came closer to this box and asked the man if everything was okay with him. But no one answered him. Ikenoji asked, who is this? There's someone there isn't there. At that moment, Haru heard something and told her master that a new batch of monsters was already approaching, and there were a lot of them. They follow the main road on the right. Although, maybe a little to the side. Ikenoji stood up and asked her if she was ready. Haru said no problem. Ikenoji turned to the man who was sitting in that box and told him that another group of monsters was approaching here, and that's why he should wait a little until they deal with them. But then that child spoke to him and said that before it was too late, let them let her out of here. Ikenoji took a child out of this box. He noticed a collar on her and thought that she was a child and already a slave. She looks like his sister's age. Then he noticed that Haru was looking at him intently. He asked her if something had happened. Haru said that the monsters suddenly stopped coming here and dispersed. Ikenoji was surprised and said what a relief. I wonder why. The girl still stood aside from them and was still silent. Ikenoji spoke to one and asked her forgiveness for not being able to save her owners. The girl said that something happened again. And again, it's all because of her. Ikenoji looked at her questioningly as he did not understand what she was talking about. The girl said she didn't know who they were, but could they kill her? Ikenoji hit her on the head and said that he would not kill her. What the hell did that kid just say? Haru told him that it looked like she was a rented slave. If he kills her without a reason, the heavenly court will give him a criminal skill. Ikenoji said that, but he doesn't want to kill her. Haru cuddled up to him and said that's not what she meant. Ikenoji said that he knew, but he just wanted to explain it to her a little. And now about the main thing, why was she buried? She was a hired slave, right? She still belongs to her slave trader. What did she do? But the girl didn't answer him. Ikenoji sighed and said that even if she didn't want to talk, it was fine. In the meantime, they must bury these people. 
There's even a hole already prepared. Haru asked what they would do with the things of the dead. They become the property of those who find them. Ikenoji said that everything is fine because they have no problems with money, so they will bury them as they are. After they buried all these people, Ikenoji said that it was time to move forward. Haru called him and looked at that child. Ikenoji walked up to this girl and asked that Carol, right? Carol said he didn't need to worry about her. Ikenoji told her that they were somewhat lost, and that's why he wanted to ask her if she knew the way to the city. If so, could she become their guide? Carol looked at them in surprise and then said that then let them follow her. After some time, she led them to the city of Balazur. Ikenoji was surprised and said that it was very big. They went inside the city and met knights there. The knight immediately looked at Carol and said that means they are all dead. Carol said yes. The man said it's clear. After that, he turned to Ikenoji and Haru and asked them why they brought her back, right? Let them accept his gratitude. Ikenoji said nothing. The knight told them that now let each of them put his hand on the crystal. After they passed this test, they went to the central square of this city. Ikenoji suggested that Haru consider renting slaves. After all, they obey the mercenaries only for a certain time, but can't they escape? Haru said that the slave traders do everything to prevent their slaves from running away and committing suicide, and that is why they can only ask for murder. Ikenoji thought that in his case, even if he committed murder, there would be no problems because he could simply change his profession. However, if he once replaces the unemployed, he will no longer be able to change professions, so he must be careful and only kill criminals. After all, he can't seem to get rid of being unemployed. However, the words he quits his job will not make sense. After that, he suggested that they take Carol to the slave trader. But then he stopped because he saw a statue in front of him that I reminded him of someone. Haru said it was a Torlulu statue. Ikenoji asked about the people who are now gathered around this statue and asked what they were praying right. Haru said that she heard that one person suggested praying to the goddess without any annoying procedures and the church allowed him to do so. Ikenoji said that it is understandable however, he thought about it a while ago, how does she know all these things so accurately? Haru said that she loved reading books in the royal palace. Her parents often took her there. She got all her knowledge from there. Ikenoji said it was amazing. He himself thought that if he thought like that, then he knew so little about her, so she's been here before. He didn't tell her much about himself either, so next time they should have a nice chat. After which he invited them all to rest. Haru said okay. Carol asked if it was okay for her to do the same. Ikenoji said children should not worry about such things. Torlulu helped him in the end. The goddess will be happy if she has more followers. Carol told him that she was not a child. Ikenoji patted her on the head and said that she should not forgive him for treating you like a child. Carol said that she is half mini human and that is why she looks younger. Ikenoji was very surprised by this. Haru said it was a cross between a human and a mini human. The height of this race is half that of ordinary people. Ikenoji asked that if she only looks like a child, then how old is she? Haru already looks like an adult. Haru said that she looks her age. She is 18. Ikenoji was surprised and asked that she was really younger than him. Haru asked that he didn't know how old she was. Ikenoji said that he felt it was rude to ask the girl her age. But why did she turn blue? He turned to Carol and asked how old was she? Carol said she was 16 years old. Ikenoji was a little shocked and thought that her age was that of a high school student. He said that they should pray now anyway. The girls agreed with him. Hen Carol entered the building and told the woman, whom she called Madame Quinns, that she had returned. The woman told her welcome back. She looked at Haru and Ikenoji asked what kind of people these were. Carol said that these were the adventurers who saved her from the smugglers. The woman said it was clear. Let her go back to her room and rest while she takes care of the guests. When Carol went to her room, did the woman thank them for saving the girl? She also apologized and said that this child despises his existence. 
This is already the fourth group. Adventurers who met Carol. Ikenoji asked why is this happening. The woman said that because Carol has a unique profession. Ikenoji asked Haru in a whisper, what a unique profession, right? This was the first time he had heard of it, so he didn't know what it was. Haru said that this is a profession that cannot be obtained through standard methods. The most famous unique professions are hero, demon lord, king, and noble. These professions require the fulfillment of a certain condition, and that is why not all people can get them. Hereditary and acquired. Pirates and bandits are also kind of unique. They are usually called criminal professions. The woman said that Carol has one of these unique professions, or rather a temptress. Ikenoji asked that the temptress write. He himself thought that only Haru came to mind. Well, for him she is definitely a temptress. He said it looked like she had nothing to do with the profession. The woman said that this profession is quite problematic. Every night, whether they want it or not, they release special pheromones that attract monsters and they have a certain skill. It is constantly active when she is in dungeons or underground. She thinks it was about eight years ago when this unique job first appeared and she attached herself to Carol. This is an uncontrollable skill. Ikenoji listened carefully to the woman and then asked Haru what does an attached skill mean. Haru said that this is a skill that he can only use with a certain profession, but he cannot change this profession even in the temple. Ikenoji asked that isn't it dangerous? She cannot change her profession, and that is why she is constantly attacked by monsters. If this is not controllable, then it turns out that they are endangering themselves. Carol said they didn't have to worry about it because the monsters weren't attacking the temptress. They attract other monsters and attack if they surround them, however, if the temptress is afraid of monsters, then the hypnosis will wear off and she will be attacked. Ikenoji said that's why they put her in the box to simulate an underground space to activate the skill, and that's why there were so many monsters there. In fact, it's even dangerous at night in the city. The woman said that he is a very kind person. If she sits in a closed room and does not allow pheromones to escape, then there will be no problems. Well, because of this skill, they cannot take night walks, and there are many other restrictions. Her rent is quite high. They should not overuse the skills, although they are quite useful for adventurers and the like. Thanks to them for returning her safe and sound. They want a reward, so let them wait a little. Ikenoji told her not to worry about it. They just happened to be passing by. They really wanted to walk around this city, so they set off now. After that, they left this house and went for a walk along the night streets of this city. Haru turned to her master and said that with his strength, perhaps they could. Ikenoji understood what she was talking about and agreed with her. He said that's right, maybe he can change her profession. He thought about something very strongly after which he said that he could change professions, only his allies, although probably he could help her by renting it, and then secretly change profession however, if he does this then. He thought that there was a high probability that his skill in changing careers might have been discovered by queens and others. In order for his secret not to be revealed, he will be forced to buy her, but will he simply buy back slaves if the same thing happens? Then he could tell them his secret, right? It is impossible to save everyone he sympathizes with. He already has Haru, who is priceless to him. He must first think about her and not give in to his whim, telling his secret they face certain dangers. And he also can't bring himself to do it. He guesses what his body is capable of. He patted Haru on the head and said that her situation is dire since she has this skill however, if he changes her profession out of sympathy, then her future will be distorted. Haru said that she didn't think she would have ended up in an even worse situation if he had saved her. Ikenoji said that he was not rich enough to free her. First they need to sell loot from monsters and magic stones. Haru agreed with him and said that this was true. Ikenoji said that he needed to get good food, otherwise he really considers himself a pathetic owner. He will try his best. Haru said he was great. This kind of food suits her too. Ikenoji asked what could be true. Haru became embarrassed and pressed herself closer to him. 
Ikenoji said that he was joking and suggested that she hurry up to the Adventurer's Guild. He looked at her and thought that his crazy actions might be too presumptuous. He can't fix it. His hands are already busy protecting the one he cares about. Then a familiar voice called out to them. It was Queens who said that's where they are. She was here with Carol. Queens asked that this was their first time in this city. She was right, right? She will give them Carol as a guide. Carol just nodded. Queens said they were even now. Ikenoji and Haru exchanged glances. After which he said okay, then let her please show them around. He looked at Carol and said that it happens in the city, she wears a dress. Carol said no, because she just had a special rental, so it was just an accident. Ikenoji smiled and, touching Haru's shoulder, said that he wanted to buy her a dress. He wants to see what she will look like in it. Haru said that she already received something similar to the dress from Margaret. Ikenoji asked what could be true. He saw him right. Does she want to wear it while they're out on the town? Haru was very embarrassed and said that, of course, but it's a little. Not something she would want to wear in the city. Ikenoji took out his small bag, which contained all their things, and asked her what it was. There he saw underwear and a note telling them to use it at night. Margaret chose the dress. Ikenoji was absolutely delighted and thought it was absolutely amazing. This is truly amazing. He looked at Haru and saw that she was blushing deeply. He felt a little awkward, so he said that if she didn't want it, then she should just say it. He will tolerate anything if it makes her happy. He wouldn't want to be so self-confident. Haru said that she can't, however, if he likes it. Ikenoji looked at Carol, who was still with them, and said that doing something like that right in front of a child was somehow. Carol said that she had already told him that she was not a child. No, that's not what she meant at all. Are they not slave and master? Ikenoji said no, they didn't. But then he looked at Haru, who was very surprised and said that there was no need to be so surprised. He told Carol that she was his dear companion and someone very valuable to him. Carol smiled slightly and said that the companion, someone valuable. She became sad and said that she understood. Let them forgive her, she will continue to be their guide. It would be better if they did not pass through the alleys of the gambling zone. This will cause a lot of problems, and it is also unsafe. Alcohol and inns. She recommends staying nearby. The guild that is located on that corner is quite safe. There is a dungeon in this city, let them tell her if they want to know the details. Ikenoji told her that she knew so much. Carol said that at night, under the light of the moon, she studies by reading books. Ikenoji asked that isn't it possible to use a candle or lamp in the room. Haru said that usually slaves are not allowed to use a lamp or candle, and that is why allowing them to read is already considered a gesture of goodwill. Ikenoji said I understand. He himself thought that this world was so cruel. After that, Carol continued her tour of this city. A man walked past them and caught Ikenoji's attention. Haru noticed this and asked if something had happened. Ikenoji smiled and said that this guy is a playboy. He was simply surprised that there are people who prefer to have such a profession. Carol asked that he really found out his profession. Ikenoji said yes. He realized this just by looking at him once. In fact, he learned all this with the help of his unemployed skill. Carol said that's how it is. Playboys spend most of their time in casinos. Ikenoji asked what the casino is, right? This doesn't sound much like him. Carol said that this profession has higher luck stats compared to other professions. Changing careers costs money. Only rich people can be playboys, which is why immediately after changing their profession, they try their luck in the casino. Ikenoji said that playboys live their lives in vain. Well, he's more interested in food now anyway. He approached the woman I was selling drinks to and told her that he would take three glasses of juice. The woman smiled at him and said that it was good. Ikenoji gave one glass to Haru and she thanked her. He gave two glasses to Carol and said that here is one for her. Thanks to her for the excursion. Carol asked if he was sure. 
Ikenoji said that he couldn't do that if they were both drinking. It's not good to do that. Paru said he was so wonderful. Carol thanked him. After that, the three of them went under a tree where the girls sat on a bench and drank their juice. Ikenoji said that he was hungry. It's a little late, but they should still have lunch. Haru said okay. Ikenoji asked Carol to show them where to eat. Carol said yes, and she asked if there was any dish they wanted to try. After some time they came to a small restaurant. Ikenoji said that he was glad that they came here when no one was there. Haru agreed with him. Ikenoji looked at Carol, who did not sit at the table with them, and said that this reminded him of the beginning of his adventures with Haru. Haru said that slaves are accustomed to this. This is normal for them. Ikenoji told Carol to sit down with them and eat. Just not on the floor, but on the bench. Haru told the girl that everything was fine. Carol was embarrassed, and then said that then let them forgive after which she sat down on the chair opposite them. Ikenoji opened the menu and asked what was recommended. He cannot imagine a dish based on its name alone. Carol said the bacon and egg sandwich is quite popular. Ikenoji said that means they pick up at three. Some time later, their food was brought to them. Ikenoji silently looked at the girls and thought that these girls were not going to eat until he started. Haru and Carol looked at him carefully. Ikenoji could not stand it and said that he needed to eat. He took one bite and said it was good. The two of them should eat too. Haru also started eating her food and said that it was very tasty. Ikenoji thought it was so cute. Carol burst into tears and said that she had not eaten such delicious food for so long. This is very good, thanks to them. Ikenoji thought that this was enough to bring her to tears. He asked that, however, didn't she know that the food here was delicious and recommended this store? Carol said no, she read about it. She likes to read travel magazines and the like. Ikenoji said I understand. She remembers a lot, even without a guidebook. After they ate, the three of them went to the Adventurer's Guild. Ikenoji noticed that the building was quite large. Kurlo asked that he wouldn't mind if they ended there. Haru told him that many adventurers died because of Carol's skill. Ikenoji said exactly. Then he wouldn't want Carol anywhere near the guild. He told her yes, it's enough. Thanks to her and let her say hello to Queens. Carol said yes, then she is leaving them. Then the two of them already entered the adventurers guild. Ikenoji said that this is the reception area. The elderly man said that he had not seen his face before. Why did he come? Ikenoji said that he would like to dissect the brown bears they hunted. The man said that the goods were outside the guild in the square, so he could do it there. Ikenoji smiled at this man, and he himself thought what a rude secretary. They were about to leave, but the man stopped them and asked if he had any dissection skills. Ikenoji said yes. The man asked that he had really dissected a bear before. Ikenoji said no. This is his first time. The man took his knife and said let him use this. He'll let him butcher the bear, but if he's interested in the weapon, it's behind the next door. Ikenoji said he appreciated it. After that, the two of them went to butcher the bears. Ikenoji said it would be great if he were a little friendlier, but maybe he's a tsundir. He took out the weapon that the man had given him and said that they had to do this. He changed his profession to hunter. After some time, he finally dealt with all the bears. Ikenoji sighed with relief and said that they were finished. Hunter levels have risen. Haru said it was a great job. Ikenoji said that he was tired. And I asked her what, how did she feel? Haru said she did too. Ikenoji said that they should go raise. She already washed her hands right, but then three men approached them and wanted to take their loot. One of them asked if they could give them those bears. The bald man said that the other girl too. The short guy grinned and said they were lucky. Ikenoji asked what kind of straightforward robbery was this. The man told him that it wouldn't be a robbery if he gave them everything in an amicable way. He was right, right? Ikenoji took Haru and put her in front of him, after which he asked what kind of idiots they were. And then he started tickling Haru. 
After that, he beat these guys and thought that these thieves were similar, they didn't know what self-defense was, so he taught them a lesson. They did a good job moving their bears. Along the way, they reported these guys to the guild and checked to see if they were doing anything else. Finally, he told them to never do that again. Men have already called him boss and said yes. When they settled all their affairs, they again returned to the adventurer's guild to that unfriendly secretary. The secretary calculated everything for them and said that, taking into account the cut, it came out to nine and eight hundred cents. Ikonoji looked at Haru. Haru said that considering the average price, it would be enough. Ikonoji packed everything up and said there was some money here and they were trying to steal it. He thanked the man and said that the bear was, however, easy to deal with. He returned to him the weapon the man had given him. The man said that if they received a reward, then why don't they go to the gun store? Perhaps he'll look for a better weapon. Ikonoji thought about it and thought that his sword got stuck in the bear's bodies when they fought them. Does he need a new sword? Then should Haru also buy a weapon? Without thinking twice, he said okay, then they'll look there. The man said yes, if they find anything else, then let them come in. Ikonoji and Haru left the adventurer's guild. Ikonoji looked at the sky and said it was sunset. It's already night. Haru asked what he thought about Carol. Ikonoji said that yes, he was wondering where they should go so as not to walk in circles in pitch darkness. Haru hid behind him. Ikonoji noticed this and thought that for some reason she did not leave his side. He was glad about this. Maybe she's nervous because they're in a new city. He invited her to look at the weapon. They walked into a gun store and said hello to the salesman. Ikonoji told the seller that he would like something like a bear cleaver and also a sword. The man immediately brought him the necessary weapons so that he could look at everything. Ikonoji pulled out a weapon and said it was a steel sword. It's big, but he thinks it will be easier to use. He turned to Haru and asked if she had her eye on something for herself. Haru said no, nothing. Ikonoji thought that Haru wore light armor for the sake of speed. Perhaps a dagger or short sword would suit her. He told her to walk near the stand with a short weapon. Haru said that it was good and did as he asked her. Ikonoji followed her and when he saw an interesting weapon, he asked what the dragon fang was, right? Haru jumped aside and said that she didn't say anything. The seller told them that this sword was made from the fang of a fire dragon. It turns a physical attack into a magical attack and creates flames. It is useful for swordsmen who want to fight at range, and if their control is high, they will even be able to light fires. Can they try? Ikonoji took the weapon and tried to do what the man told him. He succeeded and said that the flames really appeared then let him give them one. He gave this sword to Haru and told her to use it. They can't know what will happen in battle, so it will be useful someday. Haru smiled and thanked him. She said she would keep it. Ikonoji asked if she needed any equipment. Haru said no, if you take something else, it might notice her. Ikonoji put on his robe and told her to take a look. This is the robe for the adventurer's journey. The back is so wide that you can easily carry a backpack. Haru said that she suits him very well, after which she climbed under his robe and apologized. Ikonoji smiled and asked what happened. Haru apologized again and told him to pretend she wasn't there. Ikonoji thought, why? Then more customers came into this store. The man who came here said that this is what a weapon store for commoners is like. This wretched shop is really popular in Belarus, right? This lord's butler said that was all he heard. Ikonoji glanced sideways at them. Haru pressed herself even closer to him. The lord said that there was not a single sword here that would suit him. The butler said he was right. Not all swords will suit him. The lord said that he thought he needed a blacksmith to make him a sword. Well, this store isn't that bad, so he would even become a patron here. He got lucky. The seller thanked this lord for such words, after which the lord and his butler left this weapons store. The seller sighed with relief and said that it was good that nothing had happened. He thought about what he would have to do when the boss was not around. 
Ikenoji looked at Haru and asked that it was him, right? Haru said yes. This is a nobleman who wanted to buy it. She didn't want the master to get into trouble, so she hid under his robe. Ikenoji said that she should not be embarrassed to hide under her robe. That's not what he meant. He doesn't want her to worry about such things. She just has to control herself. Even if something happens, he will be fine and will protect her. He promises. When Ikenoji and Haru went to wash themselves, Haru told him that he should let her rub his back. Ikenoji said he leaves it up to her. He also drew her attention to what she was wearing and said that the clothes Margaret gave her suited her very well. Haru thanked him, after which she soaked a rag in hot water and began to rub his back. Ikenoji looked worried. He told her there was something he wanted to talk about. She won't mind. Haru said of course not, and I prepared to listen to him carefully. Ikenoji said she could relax a little. He came from a country called Japan. Due to his parents dying early, he lived with his sister and had an accident while looking for a job. And then he met a goddess. He had talked to her before about Tichi blessing he had received. He brought up the status window and told her to look at his work. What does she think about her? Haru was very surprised and said that there was nothing there. Ikenoji apparently did not exp this at all, so he thought that clearly no one except him Cowler see his work. Instead of an unemployed person, there is simply an empty place. He said that, as he understands with a status called Delusion 11 of Mastery, he can perform organizational tasks. This may also hide his work. This may show Iker, but his job title is actually unemployed. He has an unemployment level of 62 and this is his main job. Haru looked very surprised and didn't say anything to him. Ikenoji asked, which is implausible, right? Haru said no, she will always believe him. Ikenoji patted her on the head and thanked her. Haru said that, however, being unemployed, one cannot increase the characteristics. It is assumed that there are no skills to be gained with this job. However, its owner can use the skills of a swordsman and priest. Ikenoji said that this is only possible up to unemployment level 19. There are skills to learn at level 20 and above, and some of them are really crazy. That's how he was able to change the name of her position. According to the goddess, she assumed that this was impossible. Therefore, he just forbidden to talk about this to those he does not trust. Only because she is very important to him does he tell her this. Haru was pleased to hear such words from him, and he asked that he meant her right. Ikenoji told her that she was very important to him. Haru said that even if it costs her life, she swears that she will not tell other people about this. Ikenoji said that she shouldn't risk her life, but thanks anyway. After he told her all this, Haru again began to rub his back. But she also decided to share something with him. She said that she also had something that she wanted to tell him. He won't mind, right? Ikenoji said okay. And he also prepared to listen to her carefully. Haru said that this story happened 14 years ago. In this world, there was actually a war between the human race and the demon race. The demon lord and the heroes fought with their colossal strength. They, the White Wolf Clan, are a clan that prides itself on following the strongest. Followers of the hero, followers of the demon lord. During the war, the clan was divided, and her father was in the second group. Ikenoji thought that her father had chosen to serve the demon lord. Haru said that, and then after a terrible fight, the demon lord fell. The punishment for her father, who was a follower of the demon lord, was death. Her mother was spared but sentenced to life imprisonment. And a year ago she was sentenced to slavery. The Kanoji grabbed her shoulders and asked her if she was okay. Haru said yes. She heard that Meshes bought her because of the hero's attention. If another country had bought it, it would have been treated much worse. After this, she met the nobleman Alagir. In this country, thanks to the policy of the baron's eldest son, there was great interest in people who could complete the initial dungeon. For some time she was an escort in the dungeon during the hunt. And by the way, the reward for cleaning was a brush. Ikenoji thought that this was useless information that had just entered his head. Haru said that after she accompanied them, the nobles said they wanted to ransom her, but she refused. After that, travelers stopped hiring her. Eventually the nobles paid a large sum to the guild. She thinks, or rather believes, that they did not want to offend them. She looked at him and asked who is she to him. Ikenoji said that she was cute and attractive and he wants to hug her fluffy tail. But after he said this, he thought that there was some kind of wrong atmosphere. So he told her that she had become an important person to him, someone he couldn't live without, to those whom he loves, whom no one can replace. Haru said that she is the one who served the demon lord. She even respected him. Is it normal for someone like her to serve him? Ikenoji thought that this was why she was so indecisive. He told her that he didn't care about the demon lord. However, this is someone she respected. And that's why it doesn't matter what others say. 
He does not care. He hugged her and said that the past is the past, and she is her. Let her not say that anyone is like her, because she is beautiful. Haru couldn't stand it and burst into tears. She said she was so happy. For her the opportunity to meet and serve her master. She's truly happy. Ikenoji hugged her even tighter and said that he was also truly happy to have met her. Thanks to her for telling us about herself. Haru thanked him too. Ikenoji happily said that it was his turn to wash her. Haru said that something that would cause trouble for the owner. Ikenoji stopped and asked what didn't she want. Haru said that's not the case. It's just that something like this would be a waste of time for her. Ikenoji had already wet the towel and said that he would wash her with all the gratitude he feels every day. He thought that he had no evil intentions and said that he wanted her to stay healthy and for this it was important to take care of her body. Haru said that she would completely surrender to her owner, body and soul. Serving her master is an honor for her. Ikenoji noticed that her tail was wagging happily again. He blushed and said okay, then let her undress and turn her back to him. Haru did as he asked her and said that she was at his disposal. Ikenoji looked at the girl and thought that on the first night he was nervous and could not see anything properly. He began to gently wipe it with a hot towel and said what a beautiful back. Haru was embarrassed and thanked him. Her tail was still wagging and touching him. Ikenoji thought that a fluffy tail was touching him, and it was so nice. He looked again at what she was wearing and said that those lingerie looked great on her. Haru asked what he wanted to take a closer look at, didn't he? After that, the girl stood up and turned to face him so that he could look at her. Ikenoji blushed really hard out of embarrassment and thought it was even more awkward than just peeping. She is so cute. Then he told her to sit on his lap. Haru said it was heavy. Ikenoji said that he knows that's not true, so let her just sit down. Haru apologized before sitting on his lap. Ikenoji thought that when they were close, he felt less awkward. Anyway, her skin is so good. He took out a comb and said that now sleep would comb her tail. Haru didn't mind, so he started combing. The girl shuddered. Ikenoji stopped brushing her and apologized. He asked what hurt, right. Haru pressed herself closer to him and said that no, it didn't hurt. That's not what she meant. Ikenoji thought that her voice was so seductive. Haru said she was very pleased. After some time, he finished combing her tail and thought that the tail was in perfect order. And he's so fluffy. He looked at her and said what's next in front. It definitely needs a good wash on the front. Haru looked at her tail and said that her owner made it so fluffy. She will take care of him. She needs to take good care of him. Ikenoji thought now was the time to wash the front. But at that moment they were distracted. A man came to their door and said that dinner was ready. Ikenoji shuddered in surprise and thanked him. Haru stood up and thanked him. She said that he worked hard to wash, to help her wash. Ikenoji looked a little upset because he couldn't wash the front of it and said okay, no problem. He started to get dressed and thought that at any rate the night was just beginning, so he might as well do it after dinner. After dinner, he immediately decided to go back to the room. Hera went to her things and told him that she would like to get her weapons in order. This was not what Ikenoji expected, but he said it was good. Haru noticed that he looked somehow different, so she asked if something was wrong. Has something really happened? Ikenoji tried to pull himself together and said that everything was fine. They need to quickly get their weapons in order. He himself thought that he wanted this to end as soon as possible. Haru smiled and said it was great that he was full of energy. They must do a good job. Ikenoji said that if you think about it like that, it was theft to take it from the bandits. Haru said that there was nothing wrong with taking loot from defeated criminals. As long as there is a good reason, do not break the law. Ikenoji said what a relief. Haru said that it is not customary to talk about this in public, but, however, she will tell him that the upper goddess, called Libra, is always watching everything. So atrocities are unacceptable. Ikenoji said I understand. She is definitely a hardworking deity. And by the way, about the wooden box from the Bee Wanted hideout. He almost forgot about it. He approached this box and said that, as far as he remembers, it was carefully guarded. He opened it and said that right now with his alchemist apprentice skill called Mineral Evaluation he would be able to figure out what it was. Using his skill, he realized that it was Mithril Ore. Smelting Mithril Ore containing 20% to 70% Mithril requires a high level of alchemist skill. Hardening requires a high level of forge skill. Frequency 35%. Ikenoji said it was Mithril. Haru immediately perked up and asked is it really Mithril? Ikenoji also learned that processing this mineral is extremely difficult. There are no workshops that have a smelter for these. And this is in a country that affects the quality of ore. Haru said that the amount of mithril equipment is becoming less and less since it is a rare ore. Ikenoji asked that if they asked the government, would they process it for them? Haru said no. Many countries appropriate methods of its processing. 
Also, the mountains where ore is mined are protected by these countries. It is almost impossible for an ordinary person to mine ore. Ikenoji said that if that was the case, then he could only increase the level of alchemist and blacksmith skill in order to make mithril equipment. He asked her that would she help raise the level. Haru said of course. Ikenoji thought that then he would increase the difficulty of their tasks. He opened the menu and clicked on the options for missions and player. Then after that they began to prepare for bed. Ikenoji said that he had already had dinner, and they had put the weapons in order. So, preparations for tomorrow have already been completed. He himself looked out the window and thought what a beautiful growing moon. Haru said that all that was left was to sleep, and she herself thought that they would sleep together. And this thought made me very happy. Ikenoji sat down next to her on the bed. He told her that he would help her undress, and he himself thought that he was no longer a virgin, and this time he would behave properly. Haru blushed slightly and said yes, after which she approached him. Ikenoji looked at her questioningly, and after that, Haru completely lay down on him. Ikenoji was embarrassed and thought that Haru was aggressive. Haru snuggled up to him and apologized. She said that she thought he would like it if she took the initiative, no matter how she is. Even if she is active, she doesn't know what to do next. Ikenoji smiled and thanked her. He said it was important to him. He's new to this too, so they can learn everything about each other together. Haru smiled and told him to teach her many things. She will do her best. Ikenoji lay down in bed with her and thought that someone who always tries their best. As a man, he is happy that he has such a person. The next morning came already. They quickly got ready and went outside. Ikenoji was whistling now. Haru said that he whistles very well. Ikenoji smiled at her and said that it was one of his class skills. In fact, whistling from level 5 allows you to play the magic flute. Now they are going to the casino. Although they were supposed to be going to the dungeon, it seemed like the nobles were heading there. Haru's scent will help them keep track of everyone. They avoided the dungeon in order to prevent a meeting with them. Why do they need to go to the casino? While it would be nice to just raise the level in the hotel. If he wants to play in the casino, then he needs to buy tokens. It seems that 25% of token purchases are charged as tax. And if it's a tax, that means there will be a bonus stage that will allow commoners to level up. It seems that when his commoner level increases, he will be able to open a position as a healer, so he definitely wants to increase it. There are not many ways to restore my health. Although this is the main reason, he also just wants to look at the casino. Overall it seems like it's illegal to exchange tokens back for money, and that's why they can only exchange them for things. After some time they came to a large building. Ikenoji said that it seems to be here. They went inside and the girl greeted them. She immediately noticed that they were a little scared, so she asked that this was their first time at the casino, right? Ikenoji said yes. The girl said that then she asks them to follow here. She gave them the tokens and told them that in order to use the casino, they needed the tokens. The minimum purchase amount is 100 souls of currency, for which they will receive 75 white tokens. They must remember that each white token costs one soul, and from the purchase of 100 tokens, 25 will be withdrawn as tax. A blue token is equal to 10 white tokens. One yellow token equals 100 white tokens. A green token is equal to 1,000 white tokens. A red token is equal to 10,000 white tokens. A black token is equal to 1 million white tokens. The girl told them that they would then start with 400 souls. At this point, Ikenoji was informed that he had increased his level. Ikenoji was a little surprised and thought that his level was already increasing. He asked the girl that before they moved on, could they exchange the tokens for that scarf? The girl said that, of course, and they thank him for his choice. After he received this scarf, he walked up to Haru and put it on her. He said he looked great. Haru thanked him and asked that he really wanted to give her something so expensive. Ikenoji said that if he was going to buy a token, he had to make sure he didn't waste it. He himself thought that slaves should not play here, so he hoped that no one would notice her collar. He also gave her a bag of money and said that it was for her so that she could have fun today. Haru thanked him and said that she would definitely earn more and show him what she could do. Ikenoji said okay, let her just have fun and don't worry, it's okay if she loses everything. After that he was left alone. Ikenoji thought that he had always wanted to try this one. It looks like a real casino machine. The rest of the machines are too complicated for a beginner like him. If he just wants to rely on luck, then this is just for him. Even if someone like him plays, it should still work out. If you choose the profession of a hunter, you can upgrade your high dacha, and with an ability called sensitivity you can temporarily improve it even more. He went to this machine and put in one coin. This time he was lucky and won, which made him very happy. He thought it was quite nice to get them so easily. Then he stopped abruptly because he saw a clown. 
Behind him there were two men who were talking to each other and Ikenoji accidentally overheard their conversation. One of them said that, by the way, the priests who came to perform that week were great. Another asked that they were marine, right. They were wearing those strange masks. It was definitely worth watching. Ikenoji thought that it seemed like there was more to this casino than just gambling. If he succeeds, he will find Haru and ask. She may be upset that she lost all the tokens. Then he will share his tokens with her. There are so many people here. What is going on there? He saw ears ahead and realized that it was Haru, and she had a whole mountain of tokens. He thought that while he was winning little by little at the slot machine with beginner's luck, she was raking it all in. Ikenoji came closer to watch her play. Now her next round has just begun. He watched the game carefully and thought, why did she bet on this number? Is it really intuition? And Haru won again. Ikenoji thought she had won. Lucky? No, this is. She selected a group of numbers on the roulette wheel. She saw that the ball would land around 24, and that's why she bet on 13, 36, 24, 3 and 15. Although it was a little strange, it ended up in the third lot. The man behind said that it was simply incredible. Seven wins in a row. Another man asked that she could really guess where the ball would land while the roulette was spinning. The beast said that this was impossible. We needed to develop varieties of kinetic vision. Ikenoji was a little shocked that she had already won seven times in a row. He came up to her and said it was just amazing. Haru looked a little worried and said that he caught her doing something inappropriate. It's a shame to bet on five different cells, she can't predict the ball's trajectory accurately. Ikenoji thought, is it really a shame? No, he thinks she's the best. He asked her, by the way, how many tokens does she have? Haru said 12 are black and some green. She thinks they could buy food with the tokens. Ikenoji thought that there were more than one. Two million souls here. He said that if she was with him, he could cover all the expenses. Then a man approached them and said that he saw them at the roulette table, and it was impressive. He is the owner of this casino and his name is Gorso. Ikenoji tensed and wondered if he really thought they were cheating. Gorso said that skill and its companions. He would love to experience it. Ikenoji said they were just amateurs. They are no match for someone like the owner. Gorsa said no, because he was just the owner of the store. Ikenoji used the skill again and learned that the man was a level 39 player. He thought, what does a player mean? In such a high level, what does he want? Maybe they have earned too much and he warns them. He just wants to leave while they can. However, if he does that then they may not be able to come back. Ikenoji turned to him and said that he had a question. With his permission, can his tokens be exchanged? Does he mind? Gorso said of course not. If this is what he wants, he will be very grateful. Ikenoji said that they just wanted to have fun here. If possible, he would like to buy a couple of items. A technique for obtaining money from a casino using an authorized method. Black tokens are made of precious metal and are extremely expensive. Twelve black tokens can be exchanged for money at the antique store next to the casino. This will give them 120 gold coins, which will then be exchanged for tokens at the casino. This exchange will turn into 9 black tokens, as 300 souls will be taken as a tax. And then 9 tokens will be exchanged for gold again for tokens and this process will be closed. Since this casino is run by the government, more tax means more benefit for them. Perhaps because the level of support for the casino will depend on the amount of tips received. Nikonoji is the type who won't attract attention and pay a fee. The casino is so prudent that the fee is reduced for the nobility as if it were their own. Even so, they will definitely remain in the black. In any case, the casino should have been puzzled about this as soon as they suffered losses. After that, the two of them left the casino. Ikenoji apologized to Haru and said that he spent a lot of money with her winnings. Haru said that it's okay because she overdid it a little. Ikenoji said that if anything, he raised the level of commoners and it was largely thanks to her. He also opened several new positions. Now his commoner skill was already level 72. A commoner skill called Scream was discovered. A position called Magic Clerk has been opened. A position called Assistant Sorcerer was also opened. And also the commoner's skill called Howl has been upgraded to a skill called Howl 2. Magic Scribe Skill. Commoner Level 50. You need to pay mana in order to make the documents magical. Documents will contain a special effect. The experience gained is the conclusion of a contract. Sorcerer's assistant requires commoner level 60. Can handle simple healing magic. Work with high attention to magical protection. The experience gained is the use of healing magic. Haru said that at least is expected of him. Come up with a way. Thanks to him. Ikenoji looked at her brooch. It was a wind brooch that increases resistance to wind attacks. Increases speed when equipped. He said that he traded it for her right away because he thought it would suit her. It suits her even better since speed is a priority for her. 
He himself thought that I was using the tokens that Haru had earned, so he bought her such a gift. Next time he will buy her something else to earn money. He told her that she was so reliable. Haru said that even if it costs her life, she will live up to his expectations. Ikenoji asked her to value her life a little more. He asked her that maybe they would go into the labyrinth. Haru smiled and said okay. But a man ran towards them and shouted that there was alarm. Demons have invaded the city. These are woolworms. Everyone must inform security and evacuate people. If there are travelers here, they need their help. Knights had already gathered at the entrance to the city where the most of these demons were. The commander shouted to the others not to let them outside the walls. We can't let them sneak around on the street. Someone shouted that they were outnumbered. The commander told them to fight to the death. They have to be careful because these worms spit threads. One of the knights told the captain that there were too many of them. Another knight said that one had slipped through and they must hold it. At this moment, Ikenoji and Haru came to their aid. Ikenoji used his sword slash skill and killed several of these worms. Haru didn't lag behind him either. She ran along the wall and also killed several enemies. Ikenoji said what an amazing way to run on a wall. Even he probably couldn't do that. Haru told him that the monster was behind him. Ikenoji immediately used his skill called Small Fire. The knights were very impressed by their strength and said that this is power. Someone asked if he was a wizard. This is so encouraging. Then the captain approached him and addressed him. He told him to control the power of magic. He could burn down the entire street. Meanwhile, behind them, the knights were already putting out the fire that had formed because of him. Ikenoji said that the thread monster spreads the flames. He approached these knights and used his skill called small water and put out the fire. But this time he screwed up too. The captain approached him again and said that he would drown them. This is too much for small spells. Ikenoji thought that he should refrain from using magic in the city. The captain exhaled and said that the monsters were at the wall and, apparently, they had been destroyed. And there are no problems getting inside, so thanks to him. Ikenoji said you're welcome. Everything's under control. The captain said he was such an outstanding adventurer. He saved their lives. Ikenoji said that he should not take it into his head. The captain said that this also applies to his comrade. Haru, meanwhile, continued to fight the monsters. Ikenoji looked at her and said that she was very good with a fire sword. Then some knight called for help and said that they were dragging him away. Ikenoji ran up to them and told him to run and hide. He himself used his slash and destroyed the monsters. And all the liquid that these monsters contained poured onto him. Ikenoji said that now he is covered in this nasty slime. After that, he and Haru continued to destroy monsters. Everyone else just watched them as no help was needed. The man said it was an unusual group of two. The other man said that as an adventurer, he would not lose to them, they should also continue to fight. Then the knight told them all that they must strengthen the defense of the gate. He turned to all the guards and said that he was like a phalanx, shoulder to shoulder. Don't barge in for any reason. Ikenoji continued to help the knights with the monsters. Now he saved the captain. He approached him and asked if he was safe. The captain was a little injured and said that he saved him. And then everyone noticed that the monsters froze and stopped attacking. And then they turned around and simply crawled back. Everyone was very surprised. Ikenoji asked that they were really retreating. What happened? The captain said he didn't know. In general, they are a type of demon that does not leave their nests for attacks and cannibalism. They attacked without reason and retreated just as suddenly. He can't even imagine what's going on. At this point he was informed that his level had increased. A magician's apprentice skill called Minor Healing was acquired. The fighter's ability called Habit has evolved into a skill called Habit 2. Ikenoji decided to use his new skill. He approached him and asked permission for me to examine him. He himself thought that he had mastered the healing spell just in time, and he applied his little treatment. The captain's early delay immediately tightened. Ikenoji thought that it didn't work instantly and only worked around the wound. It will be difficult to use it in a real fight. Here he raised his level again. He thought it raised his level quite well. The captain looked at his no longer wounded hand and said that it was healing magic. He's of noble blood, right? Ikenoji said no, he was just an adventurer. The captain asked that this was really true. Every magician healer he has met is a nobleman. And he's just a wonderful bodyguard. Ikenoji thought that he was right, she really was amazing. But she was still not a bodyguard. Haru walked up to him and asked if he was okay. Ikenoji said yes. And he asked that she wasn't hurt, right? Haru said no, everything is fine thanks to the wind brooch he gave her. Ikenoji said that, however, they are all in this liquid of worms. How cool is it that there is an empty barrel here? He thought that he needed to restrain himself. It's just a little needed. He used his small water skill and then his small fire skill. And he filled this barrel. 
He said that the hot bath was ready. Haru said that he was expected to put fire in the water. Ikenoji said that even this amount of water should be enough for them to wash everything off. Then the system again told him that he had received a new level. His wind magic skill increased to level 2. He told her to turn her back. The knights approached them and asked that it would be okay if they also used water, right? Ikenoji didn't mind. After that, he approached them and said that with their common efforts, they grandiosely resisted the attack and saved all of them. Later they will be able to pick up the ingredients for the wormhole and a reward from the city. Ikenoji asked Haru what it is. Haru said that this is not to go, which is what the worms secrete. Can be used to make yarn as a web, and then make fabric and sew something. Unraveling a thread from spittle is a painstaking task. This is usually done by the Guild of Spinners. Ikenoji thought that usually, if a high-level group entered the battlefield, then someone like him would not get the trophies. He can count on the money raised from the sale of parts of the monsters he himself obtained. However, there shouldn't be any problem getting the reward since he's in the group with Haru. The unemployed profession has such a harsh structure. He thanked her for being in the group with him. By the way, why did the monsters attack? Then Queens came up to them and asked if they could have a second. Ikenoji asked why did she come all this way? There has just been a monster invasion here, it is still very dangerous, she had better leave. Queen said she heard there was a worm attack. She thinks Carol's ability is involved. One way or another, this child is not here. Ikenoji asked if she happened to see any of the nobles. Queen said yes, she remembers. Early in the morning she rented out Carol. Ikenoji asked that the tenant was all ear, right? Haru said that in the morning the side of the labyrinth smelled noble. Ikenoji said that then everything fits together. It is clear what set these monsters in motion. The reason why they attacked so well together and also retreated together must be because of Carol's skill. He turned to Haru and asked if she could pick up her trail. Haru said no. The smell doesn't seem to be coming from outside the maze. Ikenoji said that even if there is no smell outside, the retreat of the monsters means. This means that the smell, although it does not leak out, moves inside. This happens when Carol leaves the maze. It will happen again. Queens was scared and said that even if she had told her more than once not to go to the labyrinth on the outskirts of the city, inside the labyrinth, her abilities become much more dangerous. If she doesn't report to the guild, no, if she doesn't report to the country, then, Ikenoji thought that with his skills, he had to do something. He told the woman that he would do something about it. Queens asked what exactly he was planning to do. Ikenoji said that he will save everyone without allowing even one casualty. He will not allow anyone from this city to get hurt. Haru asked that he was coming to use his skills, right? Would it be okay if he used them? Ikenoji said that by using his wind magic, a strong current could be directed from the entrance to the labyrinth. By doing this, they will be able to prevent the pheromones from flowing out. Haru said that she understood. Whatever happens, you will need to find out exactly where the girl is and it is very important to do this quickly. It will be too late if the pheromones are all gone. Ikenoji asked what would allow her to use her ability. Haru said sure. He turned to the woman again and said that he was asking her to stay a second. The woman apologized for the inconvenience. He told her that he promised that he would return the girl. After which they hurried into the labyrinth. They were already inside this labyrinth and were looking for Carol. Ikenoji said that nobles are still important people who do as they please. They affect the combat readiness of the guards at the entrance to the labyrinth. Before going into the labyrinth, they asked something from the knight who told them that they knew about Lady Carol's abilities. She tried to stop her, but he was not supposed to contradict the words of the nobility. A swarm of worms began to appear as soon as the three of them entered the maze, even though such things appeared before his eyes. Ikenoji said that they even burden Haru. In fact, he would like to remain at the entrance, waiting until, having picked up the trail, he could decide how they would act. Since there are several entrances and exits, then he would have to explain the situation to all the guards and at the same time, when the smell reaches the surface, he should be at that exit. If they go against the nobility, it will bring him a lot of trouble. How is it not obvious that there are no monsters here? Haru said that perhaps they followed the scent and ran into Sebastian, who had already killed them. Ikenoji said that in the end, instinct probably tells them to get levels. What is a nobleman like? Haru said that she heard that they can change professions to one from the upper echelon. However, the conditions for this seem to be very strict. Ikenoji asked that if they could change their profession to something like king. Haru looked at him in fear. She said that if he is from an ordinary family of nobles, then it is impossible to become a king. The new king is only the heir of the former ruler. If anyone hears his words, he will be considered a criminal and executed. Ikenoji said it was scary. Then the social status is called a gap. 
Ashoka. But more importantly, why did that nobleman want to buy it? He looked at the girl and thought that she was still a cutie with soft ears and a fluffy tail. It simply appeals to the desire to possess her. He said that, however, he was actually happy that she did not choose the side of that noble. Haru said that she did too, she was glad that it was her master who bought it. She's very happy. The Kanoji smiled and thought that when she said that, he became even happier. Some nobleman would have wanted to take advantage of her whims, but now he is glad that she can forget that horror. After some time, he asked her what was the trace. Is the smell still coming from the front? Haru said yes. They go ahead. If they don't reach the 24th floor. Ikenoji asked if there was something else there. Haru said that there are minotaurs in the labyrinth near this city. These are strong monsters. And I decided to increase their HP. It takes a lot of time. They can appear singly, or maybe in a group of several individuals. If they all get together, then, as he says, this can jeopardize his entire passage. The smell thickens. This is the smell of those people who are together. Also, although slightly, it still smells like blood. She thinks Sebastian is injured. Ikenoji said that we need to find them, and asked that can nobles see healing magic. Haru said that she had never heard of such a thing. Ikenoji said that it was understandable that he himself thought that, to be honest, he didn't care what happened to the nobles. One way or another, if a noble dies here, it will certainly cause problems for Carol and Queens. He used his search skill and said that a certain group of monsters were definitely moving in the same direction. Haru said that this is definitely Carol's ability. Ikenoji said that they got pretty close from now on. He will act one. If he can lure out a bunch of monsters, then she will be able to figure out where she is. Haru said that she wants to go with him. Ikenoji said that frankly, he could not understand how much influence that vile noble had. It would be bad if he noticed them. He would prefer not to interfere in their conversations. No matter how dangerous it was there, so he went. He'll be fine. In fact, if that nobleman said or did anything to her, he would become completely furious. It's definitely not her fault, so why worry? Let her just return to the hotel first. He'll be fine. Meanwhile, that nobleman was attacked by a minotaur. His butler tried to deal with him. The lord got scared and said that it was coming back. He must finish him off quickly. Sebastian attacked this monster, and in the end he managed to break his neck and kill him. However, he still suffered. He looked at his leg and thought it was his leg. It gets worse, it swells. It won't be easy to get out. This means that there is only one way to survive. He turned to his boss and said that he would soon reach his breaking point. If they continue to attract monsters. Olajir yelled at him. Sebastian said that he himself would be in danger. Olajir asked that he would do something about it, right. Sebastian said that even if they meet small fry, it is mortally dangerous to be squeezed by a large group to get out of this situation safely. He looked at Carol and thought that his judgment about this slave's ability was so naive. Even if this is too cruel, he said what was needed from her. They need to get rid of her. If you kill her, the minotaurs will stop attacking. Olajir said how could he? He forbids. Sebastian told the Lord that he was the son of a noble house and the heir of the raven. He can't die in a place like this. He approached Carol and said that he had decided to go against the young master's words and would later be punished for it. His duty is to protect Mr. Olajir. If this is the essence of his task, then he will do anything, one after another. But then the Minotaur attacked them again. Sebastian hit him and told the Lord to run away. The Lord said they would retreat together. And then the Minotaur attacked him from behind and hit him. Sebastian was unable to get to his feet and told the Lord to leave quickly. Lord said he doesn't want to give it up. He won't let anyone die because he is a noble. He stood in front of his butler and blocked him from this Minotaur. Sebastian asked what he was doing. He asks not to worry about him and to save himself. And at that moment Ikenoji came to their aid. He killed this minotaur and saved them all. He turned to the lord and asked if he was injured. Lord said he didn't know his name, but he was grateful for the rescue. Sebastian asked him to bring them to the surface. They promised that they will pay whatever reward they request. Ikenoji said that he refused. He approached the girl and said that he had come for Carol. He will take them and escort them only when he is done with this. Sebastian said that as long as this slave exists, the Minotaurs will continue to attack even while they speak. He asks to think about their situation and take at least one Olajir. Ikenoji said that he will overcome this situation. After that, he attacked the Minotaurs who had already come to them. Sebastian looked in horror at how easily he dealt with all the monsters and wondered who he even was. Fighting against such a huge crowd of Minotaurs. Is he immortal, or what? Ikenoji was a little disappointed and thought that even at the time of such an important conversation, although their skin is thick, he lacks the strength to cut through it. They appear and rush to them. It will be difficult if the battle drags on, and fire is not very effective against them. 
if it paralyzes them even for a moment. He used his skill called Small Lightning. The Minotaurs were paralyzed, just as he had planned. Ikenoji thought that this would kill them. It will simply immobilize. He shouted to the others that he would cover his back and let them go forward to the exit. Sebastian turned to his lord and said that they must hurry. Lord asked is his leg okay? Sebastian said yes. He himself thought that he was fully functional. He couldn't move his leg, but he wanted to at least get the Ologier out of here. Monsters from other floors are most likely already on their way. In this case, the slave must. Ologier seemed to read his thoughts and said that he forbade him. He also cannot stay to death. He must hurry to the surface. Ikenoji continued the battle with the monsters and thought that if there was time to cure Sebastian, he would definitely be able to cope, however. These minotaurs won't let him in so easily. The battle will not end until the melody of victory sounds. He cannot relax while he is one against them. Then someone shouted that, be careful, he sensed another enemy there. One of these minotaurs came out and was about to attack Sebastian and everyone else. But then Haru came to their aid, and in one movement cut off the head of this minotaur. Olajir immediately recognized her and asked that it was her right. 